The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports, 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 sports! sports. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this feel-good championship Friday, January 26, 2024, this program starts now! Football! He's about to have a Sunday that we'll talk about for at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. Championship Sunday is just 48 hours away from where we sit right now. Wow. At 3 o'clock on Sunday, CBS will air the AFC Championship live from the bank in Baltimore, Maryland, as a dynastic Kansas City Chiefs team comes to try to battle against a dominant brand new Baltimore Ravens squad. And speaking of brand new, at 6.30 mm. on Sunday, in Greg Olson's last call as the Fox top color commentator, Whoa. The brand new Lions. Lions. Travel out to Santa Clara to take on the San Francisco 49ers who have had vengeance in spite on their minds since last NFC Championship where everything that could go wrong did go wrong in the first quarter against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now a seven and a half point spread in that one. Four points in the other one. Patrick Mahomes is getting more than a field goal in a game. Are you kidding me? What? Well, that's because that's what Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens have proved to be all year long as a dominant, physical, moxie-filled football team that is going to feed off the energy of a atmosphere that is going to be on display that has not been respected enough by the national or international media. M&T Bank is going to be upside down. Ray Lewis, what? Ed Reed, T-Pay, t says and there's a tailgoat tail goat beforehand mm -hmm. brought to you by our friends at Jimmy's Famous Seafood that is going to have DJ Diesel, a.k.a. Shaquille O'Neal wow. on the ones and twos. It is going to be a vibe. And then we're going to bop our way over to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. More specifically, Santa Clara. And the place is going to be magnetic. Mm -hmm. I am so pumped for a Sunday, and we are so incredibly lucky to be here. We will feel the beat here in about 13 minutes or so, where we will travel from each city, or to each city that is still standing in this NFL race. We'll go to somebody in Detroit. We'll go to somebody in Kansas City. Right. We'll go to somebody in Baltimore. Right. We'll go to somebody in San Fran, and we'll try to get the feel of the vibes mm -hmm. of not only the town, but the team in which they cover. Now, not all of them are beat reporters, which it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. We got some hilarious humans going to join us in the Feel the Beat segment. Then in the third hour, we got Snoop Dogg joining us. Whoa! His That's... new movie, Underdogs, is currently available on Prime, released today, about him being a uh, kind of out-of-touch ex-superstar athlete mm -hmm. who has found his way in coaching a youth football team. Yes. Andrew Schultz is in it. Mm -hmm. Mike Epps is in it. Ooh. Snoop's in it, obviously. Right. It is a star-studded cast. Prime spends whenever they create things. Oh, yeah. I assume it's going to be a great movie. Snoop has done every other show that exists in sports media promoting the show. I think we're the last one. Thankful and lucky to be doing that. Right. Go, Snoop. Snoop. Can't wait to talk to Snoop. The last time I saw Snoop, we were in the middle of a wrestling ring in front of 100,000 people. That's, That's right. right. And then I beat the hell out of Mace. Mm -hmm. And that was a good time. Didn't get a chance to chat with him before that or after that. So this will be the first time. Obviously, we're massive fans. And also, Breland, country music superstar, will debut his championship weekend pick song. 
right here on this stage. Whoa. Right here. Hell yeah. Live performance from the wow. Thunderdome Ooh. about to happen in the third hour today on YouTube and ESPN+. Plus. We're so incredibly lucky to do this for a living. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, there's a different vibe in the Thunderdome going into championship weekend. Yeah, it always is, you know, because obviously we, we love football. We we scream football Hell yeah. every single show, yeah, and, every and single hour. Yeah, we need hour. to start brainstorming what that's going to become. Well, mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of that's kind of why I feel like the vibe is different because we are all – kind of cherishing the moments that mm-hmm. we have with the 2023 to 2024 football season. And I couldn't be more excited. I mean, I'm just glad that we have these four teams, all of them, smash mouth, punch you in the face, rough, tough, old school football, oh, yeah. with a little new school flavor to it, if you will. I couldn't be more excited. I've liked the same teams all week. I think that's a very bad sign for the teams that I like because typically when that happens, that means at least one of them's losing. Mm-hmm. Usually all of them lose. But with that being said, it doesn't really matter because I don't care who wins or loses. I just want good football. And yeah, your team's not in the race. So all we want is a good game. You know, mm-hmm. the first week, uh, play, Super Wild Card Weekend, terrible game. Brutal. Then Divisional Round, great. Yeah. And we're assuming these two? going to be yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Yes. Now, I see you rocking the Columbus Catholic High School uh, mm-hmm. Adidas tarp there yep. out of Iowa. Is that for good luck? Is that uh, just getting you in the mood? Or what does that have to do with championship weekend? Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with championship uh, weekend. They did make it to the state semifinals. Way good, so boys. So wow. Didn't, I mean, I guess this, week. yes, that's te- that is technically championship uh, weekend, the championship weekend we're going into in high school football. But no, just a very comfortable sweatshirt. Um, didn't want to wear a hood because a lot of times you know, with the earpieces, they kind of get tangled up in the hood. But I just, um, you know, while I wish the Packers were playing this weekend and um, I was really looking forward to that, I'll tell you what, I, I think the NFL did get it right. Yeah. We, got the, we got the four best teams left, the four teams who are probably about midway through the year maybe saved the Cowboys and the Eagles at the time, even though they weren't playing great. I think these are the four teams everyone kind of looked to and circled and said, hey, you know what, come late January, these are the teams that we're going to be seeing. And I feel like that doesn't happen that often, um, so I'm just I'm just very very excited and praying that we get two very very competitive football games this weekend. You know, to your point about four teams that we've I mean all week we've basically been shouting. I've been saying it a lot. Like, hey, they got it right. They yep. did. They got it right. They mm-hmm. got it right. Like Cowboys could have been in there because how the Cowboys season was, but then you see them lay an egg against Packers. Like, well, obviously they weren't the right team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This particular year, not saying they won't be going forward. Sure. Even though everybody's saying, Everyone's oh yeah, they're dead. <laughs> they're Everyone. Done. They got no shot forever. There's been a couple teams that got hot through the season, but if you look at these four teams, most important position quarterback, cool. Lamar Jackson MVP. Yep. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick. Maybe. Hall, maybe. Hall maybe yeah. yeah. One, yeah. one, one of the goats. Brock Purdy, Hall, uh, MVP finalist yep. mm-hmm. for this particular year. Mm-hmm. And then Jared Goff is really the only guy that would never get brought up in any of these conversations because he's Jared Goff, and he's the one who got traded out of L.A. whenever they brought in Matt Stafford and then inevitably won a Super Bowl with that. And he's also in Detroit and everything like that. But if you look at the, how he's played with Ben Johnson as his offensive coordinator, he flipped a switch. He's been one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL, bar none, especially in that system with everything they got going on. So we got four great quarterbacks, right. four great teams. Yep. Two incredible games, two interesting lines, which brings me to one half of the hammer. Dad, Cowboys tone digs. Yeah, four and seven and a half. That's seven in the hook in the uh, NFC Championship. Which uh, we'll give to Chuck, by the way, because remember yesterday yes. when he was making Chuck Pagano, who is 11 4 and 1 on Thursday night football picks against the spread, swinging a hot bat, yeah. breaks down the games pretty well. He liked Detroit and he liked Baltimore. Mm-hmm. He's. He took it at seven for Detroit. He'll definitely take it at yes, seven and a half. For sure. Now, for you, go ahead. That seven and a half is a big deal. It's a, it's a great betting number. Anything uh, seven and three are the most key numbers in football betting. So if you can get three and a half or seven and a half, so you don't have to push on those threes and sevens where the game technically or traditionally falls between, uh, is huge. 70% of the bets are on the Detroit Lions, and that number has gone from 6.5 to 7.5, which is not normally normally the case. For those that might not have a clue what that means, please explain that. So normally, uh, if it starts out at 6.5 and and all the bets are coming in on the Lions, it would go the other direction. It would be 5.5. 
Because the lines are trying to get 50% of the bets on Bingo. one side, 50% of the bets on the other side. That is what the sports books say the line is. So whenever you see 70% of the money coming in on one particular team with where the line is, sports books minds go, ooh, we got to bring this down so we so get more people Bingo. betting on the other side. Bingo. Instead, 70% of the money was going on a team that was getting six and a half yes. points. So you would think they'd try to bring that down to five and a half, four and a half to see if we can send some money to the San Francisco 49ers. Instead, they're like, Please, yeah. we'll actually move this up wow. another point to the seven and a half, which is, hey, listen, sports books have been wrong this sure. year. This has certainly happened. This does not mean 100%. What are they saying, though? They, they, they're, they're saying that nobody has a clue. They're, they're, huh. There's well, no I, chance. It, it could also be a case of, and I, and I think uh, we have this situation this weekend where everyone is rooting for the Lions because they're America's sweetheart, so the bets are coming in, in that way and not necessarily – uh, the sharp money or whatever, just everyone wants the lines to happen. Uh, and, the, and the Niners didn't look incredible last weekend. Uh, they probably should have lost the Packers, but they didn't. They're here. They've been one of the best teams all season long. And then I think in the other game, it's currently sitting at uh, 52% is on the Ravens. So we got a pretty split action there. Which is interesting because Patrick Mahomes and the Swifties and Travis Kelsey, and they've done it before, getting four plus his record against the spread on the road, let alone being a dog just in the history yes. of what Patrick Mahomes' record is. But that is interesting. It's only it's 52% towards Baltimore. And I think it's a situation there, kind of like when we were dealing with the uh, Patriots dynasty, where everyone wants to see the Chiefs lose except for Kansas City and the Swifties. So I think we have two America's sweetheart betting teams this weekend in the Baltimore Ravens and the Detroit Lions. And both of those teams have been really good to the betters this week. Uh, so I think that, that's kind of the situation there. This year, you mean or, as yeah, a whole, year, yeah, yeah, they've yeah. been great. And Maryland has gambling. Uh, yes. Sports gambling? Yes. Yes. So. yes. Maryland has sports gambling. Kansas City, I don't know if they uh, – you hearing the static? Yeah, 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 yeah I yeah. hear the static. I don't know what that is. Go just on. shot through my head. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got both? Yeah, it just went through my ear. But I listened to it real loud. So if you heard that, we apologize. Obviously, nobody's meaning to do such a thing. But the four points for Patrick Mahomes. Okay, obviously three, three and a half and whatever it is. I would just assume that people would be blind betting yep. yeah. on Bingo. Patrick Mahomes. But I was watching the Today Show this morning, and to your point, Tone, it felt like the way the people that aren't real sports people are talking about is like, Detroit Lions, fun team to be a yep. fan of. Bingo. Exactly. And also, mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson uh -huh. can put the Swifties and everybody mm -hmm. out. It's, it's almost like that's become the storylines. As opposed to, like, hey, the San Francisco 49ers team feels as if the football gods wronged them last year. They're on a kind of a tour right now, a get-back tour for what happened with Murphy's Law in the first quarter, what could go wrong, did go wrong for a Niners team that certainly deserved last year with the moves they made and the way they were playing to make it to a Super Bowl. And then in the AFC, it's like people, not us, obviously. No, no, but the narrative around it. Somebody's got to get these people off our TV. Now. Jason Kelsey's biggest baby face on earth. There was even people saying, I don't want to see his big ass shirtless. Either it's like sometimes people get sick of greatness and the Kansas City Chiefs have been great. But on the flip side, like so is Lamar Jackson. Exactly. So Lamar Jackson yeah. has been so damn good. And the way he's handling the spotlight that he's getting has been phenomenal as well. Obviously, he's always hilarious and lighthearted whenever he's speaking. He handles the media perfectly. Doesn't give too much, but he's not like guarded. You feel like you know him enough, but he's not giving anything away. I feel like that's a strategy by him whenever he talks to him. I think everybody that is around him loves him. His teammates love him. Keith Van Noy, also known as Kyle Van Noy, right. said that his leadership and the way he gets after guys is the real deal. So whenever you think about this weekend, I think there's chances that people are hoping that this is the Lamar Jackson and I am who everybody who believed in me has said I am, guy. And here's the opportunity, literally on a platter, 3 p.m. Eastern, CBS on Sunday. Yeah, we've talked about it before. Like Obviously, with the two situations, like people want Purdy to fail, and they want Mahomes not to go back to the Super Bowl. Like That is clear. But we've mentioned this. The world has seen Patrick Mahomes. We need the people of Greece and Angola and South Africa – to know who Lamar Jackson is. Like, he has to – personally, I just want him to play – Greece, Angola? Angola popped up. Just I don't know why, uh, just because of the Jordan documentary. I, for some reason, Good that was a country team. that just popped into my head because mm -hmm. they beat Angola by 80 or whatever. Yep. And then uh, South Africa – Angola had no shot, by the way. No, 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 no That no. is not indicative of how their team is. No, no. no. That would have been any team. Yes. Yes. In Angola's yeah, history, yeah, that basketball team was – the one, best. One of the, yeah. I mean, they now, were, with that being said, <laughs> we. The dream yeah. team. <laughs> yeah, no, the word. We had it, didn't yeah. we? So, unfortunately, for, you know, this is. That Angola squad just happened to be born in the wrong. Yeah. Bingo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, wrong time. Damn. Now, granted, 
Go they ahead. were asking for autographs pregame. Mm-hmm. Well, they knew. And they're smart. You know, so they're smart. Self aware. Yeah. yeah. So Sell it later when but, they win the gold. But to your point, that's a great country. Love sports. Yeah. Yes. They're going to get an opportunity to witness something potentially if the Baltimore Ravens are able to get to the Super Bowl football that they have not seen yeah. in a long, long time or ever in their entire life. Yeah, like the 150 million people, which is probably going to be the number, maybe even 175. <laughs> shit, shit, we might get to 200. I mean, at this point, who knows what's real? But those numbers, <clears throat> like they need to see this. They need to see what type of football player Lamar is and that this exists. Like, of course, Mahomes diving all over the field, throwing seeds. is awesome. awesome. Yeah, unbelievable. Yep. I love watching that too. But this type of football, like, th- there's no teams that have been in the Super Bowl that are doing fake handoffs. How about, how about they know Kyle Juszczyk potentially, even though yeah. the Niners haven't made it in a while? How about if they, when they get their eyes on Patrick sure. Ricard, like Big you're game. talking about like Serbia getting their eyes on Patrick yeah. Ricard. Yes. They're going, this guy is, excuse me, he's what, 200 and what? 85, 290 pounds. Mm-hmm. And he's doing a little play action, getting out in the flat, getting mm-hmm. the ball into his hands, or running over people, stumbling. And there's a highlight right there that we just showed against the Houston Texans where Lamar Jackson has figured out how not to get hit, be explosive, but also not give up on plays. He will literally, he dove into a guy. I don't know yeah. if it's the next play or uh, the play before. He literally lowers his shoulder and dives into a group of tacklers. It's like he's a tough football player. Yep. It's a smash mouth style of football, mm-hmm. but it's also electrifying. It's old school football with a modern day flair that the world will fall in absolute love with. And if Patrick Mahomes is back in, they're great. Awesome. It's like the NFL can't lose here. No. The Detroit Lions get in. Never been to a Super Bowl before. Learn that. Nope. Learn that this morning about a hundred different times on the today. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was basically the whole Suzanne uh, Savannah. Savannah. <laughs> it is Savannah, I think. So, so wife is on a girls' trip. Okay. So daddy daycare and daddy zookeepers taking place. Sure. sure. So I'm just trying to keep things as similar to what the wife does in the morning as possible for all parties. <laughs> yeah. So she watches the Today Show religiously in the morning. So I've just kind of turned it on. It's her TV anyway. Turned it on. Kept it on. Not a bad little program. Okay. Good way to wake up. Not a bad. Not bad. <laughs> now that I have, uh, I've watched it the past couple of mornings, not a bad program. And I actually got a chance to see Hoda Kotb, I believe. Oh, yeah. Mm. Who has electric energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, just absolutely. Ele- I got to see her out at the Rose Bowl. And I told her, I'm like, hey, my wife is like one of your biggest i'm sure you hear this all the time I, in the middle of talking <laughs> yeah. to her, i'm having like 14 different thoughts and i take a picture with her and it was like a cool moment but the last couple of days really been able to watch the show they had uh live shots and bars in every single city that was made in the championship and the lions one really was stealing the show early i mean we had face paint at like Ooh. whatever 6 a.m in the mm-hmm. morning whatever oh, it was yeah. chanting let's go lions and then if you see what happens at the detroit red wings game last night Ooh. you're like this city of Detroit can feel that they're about to potentially accomplish something that they've never been able to accomplish in the past. And you think about the city of Detroit. You think about all the other legendary football towns. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you start thinking of football towns, what do you think of? Well, you think of like... uh like a blue-collar place. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You think of a place that lives and dies with how the team does. You think of like a gritty city. You think about maybe cold. You yeah, think about a little sure. bit chilly. It's like Detroit is a football town. Now, yep. granted, they were calling themselves Hockey Town for a while. For no reason. We are Hockey Town. They are no longer that. Back no, we are there Hockey Town. No, they're they are no longer hockey town, okay? <laughs> Detroit Red Wings were awesome whenever there was six, ten, eight teams, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, and then you guys take Hosa and you have a little bit of run, whatever the case is. <laughs> but they, they were like hockey town. And the reason why they were known as hockey town is because hockey is an incredible sport. The Detroit Red Wings were fantastic. But the reason why I say that is because the Lions were never, mm-hmm. you know, the Lions win anything. Yeah. It becomes a football town. Mm-hmm. Like that is kind of what happens in the United States of America. Now, them being this close and the energy is magnetic. Mm-hmm. They they are acting as if it's their first time. Yep. Barry Sanders, you know, used to just score a touchdown, hand the ball to the ref, act like it isn't your first time. It is currently the Detroit Lions' <laughs> yep. first time, yeah. and I'm pumped to hear how they are acting and responding. Here's last night at the Red Wings game. Jared Goff chance ringing through Little Caesars. Yep, Little Caesars Arena. Little Caesars Arena as the Detroit Red, uh, Red Wings blow out the Philadelphia Flyers. Of course. Who haven't won a Stanley Cup since, uh, when was the last time the Flyers won? 1975. Uh, they, they had a team back then. Yeah, yeah. 75. The uh, all right, well, anyways, let's go to a little piece of journalism. Ooh. 
So our show is a regional program, right. but we operate as a national show, yeah. potentially international show. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're, from a high level, heard on a call this morning, yep. from a high level, we're looking in mm -hmm. on all the situations everywhere. Always. But we wanted to be a little bit better than that sometimes. Of course. So we created a segment that, you know, how do we get into the, the real roots of these cities? How do we get to find out what it feels like on the ground in these cities when we're not capable to be able to be there. We want to provide to the listeners and the viewers of the program a little bit more information that we, as regional, national, international doofuses, cannot do. So we said we got to talk to the beat writers. Oh, we got to do it. So we created a segment called Feel the Beat. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, uh, Beats. Writer for The Athletic for the Kansas City Chiefs. Used to cover the Pacers here in Indianapolis. So obviously, if you touch down in Indy, you got a massive brain. Ladies and gentlemen, Nate Taylor. Yay! How you doing, brother? <laughs> doing great, doing great. How are you, Pat? Hey, not as great as the people of Kansas City in the middle of a dynastic run, seemingly. Now, Nate, tell me this. Middle of the season, when the Chiefs aren't playing their best ball, and maybe there's a little negativity. Travis Kelsey's throwing his helmet. Patrick Mahomes is about to fight a ref. There's a lot of negative stuff happening around the Chiefs. Did the fans lose faith in this dynasty run? Did the fans think that maybe this year was going to be a down year for the Chiefs? Or was there always a sense of optimism that the Chiefs would be able to figure it out in Kansas City? Because the national narrative quickly became, they stink uh -huh. this year. Was it like that in Kansas City as well, Nate? No, I wouldn't say it was quite like that. I think Chiefs fans do have a bit of optimism heading into January just because the team was the number three seed, right? And because the fact that they have a healthy Patrick Mahomes, which was not the case in last year's postseason run, obviously you still have a great Hall of Fame coach in Andy Reid. And surprisingly enough, and I wrote this in The Athletic today, you know, the best unit on the team is their defense led by the physical coordinator, Steve Spagnuolo. So they still have a talented roster. They've had issues obviously catching the football, of course, having turnovers at weird, inopportune times. But you trust the quarterback who's the most talented in the league to sort of guide you through the playoffs. And he's done that for the last two weeks. So even though I think it was fair to criticize the Chiefs and especially their pass catchers outside of Travis Kelsey, the team has still uh, been quite talented. It's just they haven't put it all together until this two-game run. Yeah, and Rasheed Rice has obviously become – a superstar seemingly this year and a hero and a guy that had a cape on whenever they needed somebody to step yeah. up. But it just felt like all the things that hadn't happened to the Chiefs in the past were happening to the Chiefs. And you talked about how this this year it's relying on their defense to be great, which is huge for any team, but also this running game. Now, Patrick Mahomes is fantastic, yeah. but Pacheco has become like mm -hmm. national folklore yeah. almost. He tries to run through the ground and through humans every time he gets the ball. It feels like the people in Kansas City knew this guy was going to be a guy early and this year it's really been his type of team, right? Yeah. And look, I think Isaiah Pacheco had one of the most impressive, really remarkable rookie seasons you could have for a seventh-round pick from Rutgers uh, joining a championship roster, right? So he earns the starting job midway through his rookie season. He's only gotten better since then. He's becoming quite good at pass protecting too, right? So uh, you can tell that there's really some determination and honestly growth from Isaiah Pacheco. Now he's, you know, dealing with a toe injury. He's had a shoulder surgery earlier this year, but that has not stopped him from running through people. Honestly, like you mentioned, I mean, you look at his touchdown against the Buffalo Bills, he's running through three guys to get into the end zone. Um, the Chiefs sort of simplified their offense. And I always say that simplifying the offense is just giving the ball to the running back who can obviously, uh, you know, create yards after contact. So he's going to have a pivotal role in this game. And with the defense that the Chiefs have, you can lean on a running game and let your quarterback make one or two, you know, amazing throws to sort of get you over the top um, because Pacheco has been really dominant, really balanced over the course of the regular season and especially here in the postseason. Man, we're really simplifying this thing. We're just handing it to a guy. <laughs> it's awesome. Just hand, just hand, you know, nobody has to do it. We just hand this guy a ball. And he just runs through the ground and through people. Uh, Tone Diggs has a question for you, Nate. Yeah, Nate, I want to talk to you about the defense that has been really good all year. Um, Willie Gay it looked like he was spying Josh Allen last week before he got hurt. Uh, what is his health, obviously, because there should or there could be a spy situation against Lamar this weekend. And is there any worry about the Chiefs' rush defense that looked vulnerable at some points last week against Buffalo? 
No, it's two great points, and, you know, the Chiefs are really optimistic that Willie Gay will give them some production. I think the question now becomes how many snaps can he give you because he aggravated his neck injury in last week's win against the Buffalo Bills, and he's their most athletic, dynamic, you know, linebacker. So if you're trying to use him to spy Josh Allen, you most definitely need him against Lamar Jackson. The issue, though, becomes if he isn't available to go, do you rely on Drew Tranquil, uh, the veteran linebacker who's been really impressive this season, and do you do a little bit more blitzing to try to speed up uh, Lamar Jackson. On the other side of the situation, though, with the running game, it really comes down to how much can Chris Jones sort of disrupt not only the passing game, because we know he's an excellent pass rusher, but how much penetration can he get from that three tech spot? And how much does Steve Spagnuolo want to sort of send a fifth guy, whether that's linebacker Leo Chanel, whether that's Mike Pinnell coming from the inside as well, to help George Koloff, just to help Charles Aminahue. But, yeah, their run defense has been the weakest part of the defense. Okay. Um, but the but the good thing about Spagnuolo is he does find a way to get this team into third and longs, and they usually have success when the defense is put in third and long situations. Last question from me before we let you go, and we can't thank you for joining us enough. You hear this Andy Reid's going to retire, Bill Belichick's going to become the head coach rumor? Whoa. You hear that, Nate? What is going on? What is going on? That's not about this weekend, but what the hell is going on, Nate? Look, man, I don't, I don't know, Pat. Uh, there's no one in the Chiefs organization who has talked to me who has suggested anything of Andy Reid potentially retiring. So it'll be a shock to me. I know it will be a shock to many people in the organization if that is a decision that Andy Reid ultimately makes, whether it's next week if the Chiefs lose to the Ravens or if it's a couple weeks following the postseason uh, with the Super Bowl. But, no, I, I think Andy Reid's a football lifer. Uh, he's got the best quarterback in the league. Uh, he's got a roster full of talented and particularly young players, too. And with Matt Nagy and Steve Spagnuolo, he's obviously got coordinators that he trusts and he has worked with before and now. So I know the the rumors are out there. I even asked Andy Reid fellas a couple weeks ago when he said, look, I, I understand why you're asking me, Nate. It's because I'm old. And I said, hey, coach, I, I didn't say you're old. Seasoned. But, <laughs> seasoned. Seasoned. But you're, yeah, you're very much seasoned. But I, I think I get the sense that um, because he sort of told Jay Glazer before last year's Super Bowl that, hey, you know, I don't know how many years I have left of this, that you do understand he's towards the end of his career than the beginning. But I do, in, you know, as far as I know, I still expect him to be the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs when they enter the 2024 season. This happened for the Patriots, too. You guys are in the middle of a dynasty. So whenever you accomplish a lot, people just say, like, hey, you've already accomplished everything you wanted to accomplish. Your Hall of Fame resume is already done. You've committed so much to football. Don't you think you just want to go enjoy? Everybody wants to put go enjoy life on people. So this is the new normal in Kansas <laughs> yep, City, yep. which is a good thing. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Nate Taylor from the NFL. Yeah, Nate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, who are the Kansas City Chiefs playing? I uh, believe it's the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, it's time to go to Baltimore. Let's feel the beat. <laughs> Not a beat reporter. No. What? Not a beat writer. What? But this son of a bitch is the fabric of feels, the city feels it. of Baltimore. Ladies and gentlemen, the owner of Jimmy's Famous Seafood, John Minidakis. Yay, Johnny! How are you, man? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, listen. We went from a super professional beat writer from The Athletic in Kansas City to the most <laughs> lit place in Baltimore's <laughs> yeah. owner. We appreciate you, John. I want to let you know, from outside looking in, and I know your story, and I don't want to dive into what you and your brother have had to do for your family and with that business and basically just becoming entrepreneurs at like the age of like 17 and at taking a restaurant to new heights and becoming a fabric of Baltimore. You're an American dream story, John. Hell I just want yeah. to let you know that, okay? You're an Pat, asshole. Pat. You're an asshole, but an American <laughs> dream story, John. Pat, I was uh, literally on the phone when I found out I was coming on the show today. And I told one of my closest friends, I said, Pat's the closest thing you're going to get in 2024 to the American Dream, man. And oh, John, you know, before we get into football, you know, on behalf of, you know, Jimmy's and the city of Baltimore, thank you for everything you do for us, man. You're an inspiration to so many business owners across the country, man. John, listen, that is bullshit, but I appreciate your kind words, and you're the man, John. You're the man. Hell yeah, Johnny. All right, let's get past this. Let's talk about it. You got the tailgoat taking place. Can you tell me and tell the people what the hell that is? Because I followed along online. Seems like the biggest parking lot party that I've ever seen. That's happening outside m and I assume? Yeah, absolutely. So the tailgoat is... Merch. Um, Merch. 
a, a tailgo concept that we started uh, over 20 years ago. It was 24 of us on a cheese bus with a couple cold cuts and a keg of beer. And it just got bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, we added a boom box and then we added a DJ and then we added a grill. And next thing you know, this week, uh, we're going to have 2,000 people almost at uh, across from M&T Bank Stadium. And we're going to have the DJ Diesel. We're going to have Ed Reed. It's a dream come true, man. Uh, you know, you from the Colts side, Tone from the Steelers side, you guys know what it's mm-hmm. like to have the AFC Championship game in your city. You know, unfortunately, to this point, as Ravens fans, we haven't had that feeling. I've been to Pittsburgh to see the AFC Championship game. I've been to New England twice to see the AFC Championship game, and I see the kind of effect that it has on a fan base, on the local economy, and this is just a dream come true, and Baltimore's been waiting for this forever. Well, I think Baltimore's going to show up. I've always talked about how Baltimore, M&T Bank Stadium, regardless of playoffs or AFC Championship, especially when we came to town, is one of the most underrated environments in all of sports, not just the NFL, but all of sports. Why do you think that's the case? And why do you think that the world is just now kind of getting a chance to see how insane M&T Bank Stadium is? Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we only have two pro sports teams here. And our lives... uh, revolve around those two sports teams and the Ravens from the minute they got here um, they grew an immediate connection with the city and they just took on the identity of the fan base blue collar hit you in the mouth you might hear a cuss word or two uh, coming out of the crowd uh, as you've referenced the last couple of weeks but it's true uh, you know these are people that their lives revolve around eight nine Sundays a year getting down to M&T Bank Stadium and spending time with their family and spending time with the person that sits next to them for you know since the beginning of the stadium it's who we are it's our identity and speaking of fans uh the ravens are winning this week just so we know and <laughs> we can get into x's and o's if we want okay but today would have been the greatest ravens fan of all times 18th birthday don't know if you're familiar with the story pat but the legendary mo gabba who's the reason why the ravens have the mo in baltimore in the end zone highlighted a different color uh he passed away unfortunately, um, fought cancer. But today would have been his 18th birthday, and the Ravens are winning this game Sunday for Mo Gabba. I love that. I did not know the story. I was not familiar mm-hmm. with it. And I had seen the Mo highlighted in Baltimore because yep. why be less when you can be Mo? Plus, you tie in Mo Gabba's story. That's beautiful. And it feels like, you know, maybe there are some things a lot mm. bigger than yeah. football. Yeah. Shout out, Rico. Yep. Absolutely, man. place in this entire thing. Con Man's got a question for you, John. Yeah, John, Pat mentioned it. Your, your guys' story at Jimmy's is awesome. And last time we were there, you know, you gave us a, a huge... Huge platter uh, of just like two thousand dollars <laughs> worth of food for two humans yeah. about to hop on a plane. Cicadas or no, 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 no cicadas. cicadas. That, that yeah, four. and no COVID. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. But yeah. uh, aside, I mean, steak, scallops, the the whole the whole bacon wraps, bacon wrapped. Yeah, you got the crab cakes. Obviously. Um, so I say all that just to say. You know, the people of Baltimore can be known as pretty shitty. Uh, So (laughs) when it comes to the game itself, you just said it. You you guys have already won in your mind. How do you think the Baltimore people will feel about, you know, maybe uh, Jason Kelsey jumping into the stands to chug a beer in your guys' faces after a Travis Kelsey touchdown? Or how do you think they would react to the possibility of, you know, Taylor and some of the other people in the that suite, as we all know, kind of going ballistic. Do you think Baltimore would, you know, react well to that? Or what would you say would be the reaction? Now, nah, look, um, you know, if Jason Kelsey wants to jump into the crowd and celebrate um, his brother's touchdown when his team's down 34-7, to <laughs> nobody in Baltimore would have a problem with that. I speak on behalf of Baltimore there. You know, and if Taylor Swift wants to uh, perform at halftime while the Chiefs are down 21 nothing. Look, I'm sure everybody inside that stadium would be cool for it. Um, but you know what? I actually um, was going to say the tailgate itself is sold out, Connor. I didn't know if you knew that. But, oh. Pat, uh, I got clearance from the Ravens. We're going to leave uh, six tickets at the gate for you and the boys. But, Connor, you stay away. Uh, okay. We don't want you anywhere that. near that stadium. I yeah. heard what you said yesterday. Yep. Okay? okay. And actually, you know, I, I had crab cakes. Oh, oh. Um, as you mentioned, uh, for everybody, but Connor, you kind of like ruined it yesterday. What was that all about? Yeah. What did I say? Yeah. Connor, hey, Connor's remember. an asshole. That's just his thing, John. You know that. You yeah. met him in person. You know that's the deal. Come on. Those crab cakes are delightful. Yeah. I, and they ship across the country, which is great, great business. How old are you, John? I'm 40 years old, brother. Hey. Jeez. You made it. You made it. 
That's good. 40, Pat, yeah, that's good news. Yep, but, you know, things are a little different now with the baby girl. I think uh, our daughters are a few weeks apart, so, you know, having a little fun right now. Yeah, I mean, daddy daycare full on last two days, so it's been yeah. – it's different, obviously. The first time we met each other, I think I ordered uh, – Let me tell the story. Hold on, okay. hold on. All right. <laughs> Everybody's got to hear the story. Okay. So, All right. following the John Jones fight at the Baltimore Arena – uh, John Jones decides to get on the mic and invite everybody back to Jimmy Seafood, uh, thinking that it's a Vegas nightclub or <laughs> Miami where last call is 3 or 4 o'clock. Last call here is 1.30. Everybody runs in. Place is packed. Uh, you know, rough-looking crowd sometimes, would say. Uh, and Pat rolls in and orders 100 cherry bombs from the bartender. So, of course, this doesn't happen all the time. Bartender comes over to me. Uh, John, that guy over there wants to order 100 cherry bombs. Is that cool? I'm like, oh, my God, it's Pat McAfee. Absolutely. Next thing you know, the whole bar is full of cherry bombs. Yeah, we had a good time. Hell yeah. I, I didn't know if the police were going to come and shut you down or not, because there's been a couple bars I've done that to where, you know, there's quite a scene. Allegedly. Out. Allegedly. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Allegedly, 100%. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. But you've always been kind to us. I've always appreciated what you do. And I hope this weekend you and everybody in Baltimore gets a chance to enjoy the hell out of this AFC championship. Patrick, and, and, and Pat, go ahead. On, on that part, the way you treated us, man, this is a dream come true. And we just wanted to show a little sign of our appreciation, brother. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, team. Thank you, team. Small business, beautiful. They got a great bakery over there, too. Uh -huh. They got a great bakery over Sleep there. Sleep on yeah. the brownies. Hey, keep crushing it, all right? Peter's stopping over soon. Ladies See and gentlemen. See you Sunday. You got to come. See you Sunday. Not a chance. Hey, no, I want, you just talked about our baby girls. Yeah, there is no shot in hell <laughs> of in Baltimore on Sunday. But I appreciate the invite, and we will come in the future hell because yeah. Shaquille O'Neal's DJing. Come on. Come on. Ray Lewis is MC. Ed right. Reed is going to be there. Right. T Payne's performing at halftime. Let's have a weekend. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Owner of Jimmy's Famous Seafood, John Minidak. Yeah, Johnny! All right, let's go to... The, that guy's awesome. Yeah, boy. the best. American Dream Story. Mm -hmm. Dad came from Greece to Baltimore, started a small restaurant. Small restaurant. Mm. Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Just did crab cakes and local stuff, tried to make it. Whenever they were in high school, Dad passed away. So they were... The, him and his brother, obviously both teenagers, mm -hmm. took over the business pretty awesome. much mm -hmm. as teenagers. We're running the restaurant and living in like an attic above it on like two beds that would just basically sit there. And they said, hey, we made some bad decisions, you know, something we'd have a party in there, you know, <laughs> and then cops would come in, we got to serve the next day. And then they like kind of figured it out through failure and trial by fire and combat pretty much. And now they have a, a full bakery, yeah, their full mom restaurant. Yeah, right? yeah, their mom runs the bakery. Now they have like a full ship thing. all across the United States. Legit American dream story yeah. over there. PETA hates them big time. I man. have never seen a <laughs> restaurant be hated more yeah. by PETA. And on the flip side, <laughs> yeah, a restaurant be more yeah. loud. He hates them too. <laughs> he hates them. <laughs> all right, let's go to the other side of the country, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? Hosting the NFC Championship is the San Francisco 49ers. But we, what do we know about them? Nothing. Let's feel the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, beat writer from The Athletic for the San Francisco 49ers, friend of the program, Lombardi himself, David Lombardi. Yay, Lombardi! Oh! Wow. Oh! Take the name tag off, please. Oh! Yeah. Lombo! I like what we're doing with <laughs> the... Uh, I love it. I love oh, you got to see that. Yeah. yeah. I got the V-neck out. Yeah, the show. if I had that chest, which I kind of do, but not as thick, as high, got to let people know you have that every once in a while. Um, hey, thank you for joining us, David. Yeah, thank yeah, you for yeah, joining yeah. us. Of course, thanks, thanks. Uh, okay, so I've talked about what happened in the last year's NFC Championship Games first quarter quite often this year, describing how the San Francisco 49ers' attitude towards the year seemingly has been. Murphy's Law took place. What could go wrong did go wrong. Couldn't even complete a forward pass if they tried in the NFC Championship game. Feels like that has been a mindset for the team. Feels like they're back to playing football, minus the first three and a half quarters of this past game, the same exact way. Does it feel the same as last year going into the NFC Championship, like the boys should make it to the Super Bowl this year around town over there in the Bay? Well, the big thing, I think, is they are in the number one seed this year, so they're going to be at home. They don't have to travel cross-country to Philadelphia. I think that's really, really important for this football team. And at the end of the day, the injury list is really short right now. Only Debo Samuel's on it, but he was back out of practice yesterday, and 
to be honest, I've seen him in the locker room. I've seen him out on the practice field, and I think I, I think he's trending toward playing. So th- they have that extra rest. Maybe there was a little bit of rust last week against Green Bay for those first three quarters. But I think now the, the rust is definitely out of the question since they performed down the stretch with that drive against the Packers. And now they just get the benefit from the fact that they're the fresher team. They don't have to travel. And I, I think they were favored last year against Philly, but it was narrow. This year, they're touchdown favorites, and I think they feel like that uh, entering this game against the Lions. Seven and a half is the number as of this morning on ESPN Bet. It has changed, though, from seven, six and a half, seven, 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 seven and a half, seven, seven, seven and a half now. It has moved often, but it's re- remained around a touchdown spread or something like that. Let's talk about Debo because of what we kind of witnessed yesterday from the video that we've seen from practice, I think from you and others that were there. He seemed very jovial, seemed like he was bouncing around. Didn't seem like they were holding him back. Debo's playing, right? We're 100% sure he's playing. That's the case? We're not 100% sure, but they played Super Gremlin as he was coming back out onto the field. That's the song. That, they, that was like his theme song in 2021. Yeah, so, mm. yeah, and you, you see the video. You're playing it right now. That That's what he looked like at practice. He didn't look at all encumbered by the shoulder when he was running routes. Oh, It's the NFC Championship game. Debo Samuel prides himself on being that bulldozer. That toughness, right? This and he, guess what? CJ Gardner Johnson's on the other side. I don't know if you've covered this yet, but CJ Gardner Johnson back in October took to social media and and started talking some smack Debo's way. So really? if he needs any extra motivation. This this is a chance. I love that. I love to hear he, that. Yep. So, yes. Yeah, look it up. See, CJ called him a running back. He, he gets on Instagram live and said, "Debo, you're a running back." See, I mean, in, in a pejorative way, right? So, I mean, obviously, Debo lines up in the backfield, but receivers don't like getting called running backs. I'm sure that Debo and Debo responded to it back in October. That's when CJ was still on on IR at the time, and then CJ also said, "I'll see you in whatever round I see you in." And now, well, I guess the round is the NFC Championship game. This is classic CJ GJ football, baby. Yep. Yep. Hell yeah! This is CJ GJ football since he was at the Saints. Yep. Since he's with the Eagles, mm-hmm. and obviously now in the Motor City. Dan Campbell's mm-hmm. building, same exact way. That's why they brought him in, baby. I love it. Shit stir. Love mm-hmm. everything about it. Now, is it extra motivation for Debo oh. to fight through <laughs> some injury to get there? We have a video uh, regarding the batter. Go ahead. Let's run it. Another thing, bro, listen, don't be friendly when you see me because you be so flashy. You better hope, well, you better hope all that talking you be doing when we see y'all, do it, whatever round it may be, because I can't guard you. You can't run routes. You're a running back. You're a running back. You know, I ain't going to sit here and play with you, little boy. Because you got a little bag. People gave you a oh, little boy. clout. Man, you ain't nothing, bro. Stop playing. <laughs> Wow. I did not know that. <laughs> Holy hell. Thank you. That's why we feel the beat right there. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Love that CJ GJ cut that promo. Okay. Very comfortable on a back porch, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Just like, what are we even What are we even talking about? And I'm sure Debo has heard that, as mm-hmm. you have referenced a couple times. Let's go. Let's go. This is even better for championship weekend. Ty has a question for you, Lombardi. Yeah, David, obviously, you know, the the Niners are going to want to put pressure on Goff with Bosa and Chase Young and all those explosive guys they have on the D-line, but they didn't really get to Jordan Love last week, and then the Packers' running game kind of did whatever they wanted for the majority of that game. How big of a concern is it with how good the Lions' offensive line is, arguably the the best, if not you know, a, a top-five unit in the NFL? How concerned are they going into this game that they're not going to be able to kind of control the game with uh, the Lions' kind of two-headed attack at running back? I think it's the biggest concern that there is for the 49ers because this team's biggest weakness is its run defense. Everybody looks at the rushing yards and says, hey, they're the number one run defense. It's only because they're ahead in in all these games. But efficiency-wise, they're ranked down at 26. You look at like the EPA that they've allowed per play on, on the run. So it's, I think, objectively not a good run defense. And the 49ers are going to have to muscle up, not just setting the edge. I think they're going to have to be better on the second level. They missed some tackles coming down from safety. The crack toss killed them against Green Bay. And we know that the Lions can run that too. We know that Jameer Gibbs is a rocket. We know David Montgomery brings that 225-pound beef to me, that's the key to this game. How The 49ers don't need to stop the run, but they need to control it to the point where you get Jared Goff in not just drop-back situations, 
the drop-back situations where Chase Young and Nick Bosa and Javon Hargrave can rush the passer. Because Goff has been a different quarterback when he's been pressured than, than, than when he's had a clean pocket. And the quickest way to a clean pocket is if you run the football. So I think that's you hit the nail on the head right there. That's the key to the game. Well, Chuck Pagano, our, the people's coach, actually said yesterday, he said lack of effort, too on the defensive side whenever it came to trying to tackle in the run game and lack of discipline, I think is what he pointed out. And he's an old defensive coach, so whenever he watches film, he actually gets like upset and then starts looking for things and stuff. That's not the Niners' defense normally at all. Oh. Normally, it's at least 10 guys in the frame, every single tackle flying around. Did you guys run with rust? Was the reason why the first three and a half, they didn't play as good as they possibly could? Or what was kind of the local thought on that entire thing? There were some thoughts in the locker room about rust, just... You know, n not physically, but uh, mentally. When because they not only had the uh, the bye week, they also had a meaningless game in Week 18 against the Rams. And a couple players told me, you know, it's as hard as we tried to to to, to make sure that we stayed sharp. They told me that we, we just couldn't stay sharp because th there was this. There's this deadline pressure that comes with having to win every single week and and it, you know being under the gun every single week, but they weren't for a couple weeks. So they did their best to not you know it's keep not the rust, rust off, almost too the, relaxed, almost too relaxed. Yeah, you think like almost yeah, exactly. like ah, uh, we can kind of do this, and then you get punched in the mouth, and it's like exactly oh, we kind of got to find ourselves. Good. And then whenever they needed it, by the way, bang, boom, pow. They did. They got that was huge. Let's talk okay. about the, the way that when their backs were up against the wall there in the, in that fourth quarter, all three phases of the game all of a sudden turned it on. Oh shit, we're in games again. Yeah. This actually matters. This, so let's talk about the trigger man there. The last question on the way out. Obviously, I felt the obligation to go to bat for Brock Purdy. I'm not the only one, but there's a lot of hate being thrown at Brock Purdy. And we talked to Nate Taylor earlier, the Kansas City Chiefs reporter uh, from The Athletic, and he was like, what Pacheco was able to do as a seventh rounder at the running back position his rookie year was phenomenal, let alone what he's able to do. It's like, well, as a seventh rounder quarterback yeah. position yeah. in his first two years of action here, what Brock Purdy has done has been nothing short of phenomenal and remarkable. And I know that there's always going to be people like trying to take people down and everything like that. How does the locals, how do the fans feel? They love Brock Purdy, right? Everybody understands that what is happening right now isn't supposed to happen, especially with a guy that's drafted as late as he was drafted. Well, the thing is that even if you were the first pick of the draft, it would still be phenomenal. Because yeah. he's in his second year, and he's leading every single efficiency stat in football. He's doing everything that he possibly can. Uh, the He answered the bell, I think. You know, I've talked to some coaches who say that one of the most difficult things you could do as a quarterback in the sport of football is turn it around after struggling for three quarters in a huge game. It's not easy, especially given the fact that I think weather played a part in it. It was wet in this game on Saturday night, and, and he did exactly that. He was throwing darts. I mean, you couldn't throw a, a dart at a bullseye better than that pass to Ayuk, and then the deep out to Chris Conley, the 17-yarder, to set it up. And then the scramble, too. He showed every single part of his game, and uh, he showed why he's been rated so well this year, why the efficiency across the larger sample has been so good. So to me, the, the problem is the goalposts keep on moving. Right, people. Oh, that, that's that, not oh, sports it's media, no. No. Yeah, yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> no, his stats don't mean anything. The fact that he's the top-rated guy in the league doesn't mean anything because he hasn't come back in a game. And then as soon as he comes back in a game and he does what he needs to do to, to, to satisfy those yeah. parameters, he's got so much all talent. of a sudden he has to go back to the stats. Right, well, so it, it's craziness. But I think that obviously the 49ers are thrilled with him. This is probably. The, this is the top story in the NFL. I mean, this is the, the pick number 262 performing the way that he is. I, 49ers fans have been over the moon, and, and they're ready for the NFC Championship game. Good luck out there. Enjoy the hell out of it, Lombo. Feels like it's going to be a nice 10, 15-year run on mm -hmm. top out there in the Bay. You're the man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Lombardi. Yeah, David! Thank you, Lombo. Not easy to hold that thing. No, no, no. no, no. no. Very different. Very thankful I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because even if you try to take a selfie with somebody's phone Tough. and you just budge a little bit, yeah. that thing's all blurry. Yeah, exactly. He held that thing, good angle, chest hair out. Yep. Stud. For what? What was that, 11 minutes? Yep. Uh -huh. That's good. Hey, he's got. In oh, California, yeah. too? Yeah, especially with the way that Are we air sure it was is. Was it an earthquake? Yeah. Could've oh, been. I didn't even think about Not that. Exactly. That was 11 minutes of. Bingo. Yeah. 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 yeah, certainly possible. Anyways, thank you for joining us, Lombard. Yeah. Thank you to your shoulders Impressive. for holding that thing up. Oh, that's phenomenal work. Uh, yeah.
Is there another team left that's playing in the NFC Championship game? Oh, oh yeah. Is, is there? So we talked to somebody in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. We talked to somebody in Baltimore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The San Francisco 49ers we talked to. Right. And he said it's story of the year. Wait, hold on. There, what is the uh, – there's a fourth team Come in on. the NFC Championship. There's only four teams. The Cowboys? The Eagles? Yeah. Packers? It's the other America's Should team, boys. Packers. He, no, Cowboys? Oh! Oh, oh, oh! It's on your shirt. The, the Bobcats are playing tomorrow <laughs> on Sunday? It's the – it's uh, – it's the Detroit Lions. Oh, oh my God! Hell yeah! They're in the NFC Championship. No, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's crazy. Since we didn't even really remember that, let's go boots on the ground. Let's have to feel the beat. <laughs> Joining us now, Super Bowl champion, legend, a man who's actually on the sideline of every single Lions game because I believe he calls radio for somebody up there. Friend of the program. Great bar fighter. Yes. Amen. Mike McCarthy actually called him one of the greatest bar fighters to ever exist on mm -hmm. earth. Now, obviously, he's an adult. He's grown. He doesn't do that anymore. But it is in the back pocket if you need it. Ladies and gentlemen, TJ Lang. Yeah, TJ. You think that head's getting knocked out? I don't think so. <laughs> Not a chance. I don't think so. It's, it's my Dan Orlovsky impression. Just pretend like I'm super annoyed anytime you call me. <laughs> yes. We appreciate What's it. What's up, boys? Good to Man, see you. awesome. Hey, thanks. Uh, honor to represent uh, the Detroit Lions on this uh, segment. Yeah. You're um, a beat writer, um, dude. You're a beat. You do the sideline reporting. <laughs> beat writer. Journalist, sideline, do it all, man. Hey, versatile. But, man, what a weekend, boys. I'm excited. I'm uh, pumped. I know uh, you guys are, too. Okay, let's talk about it. We got uh, two great games. Obviously, you're more dialed in than we are to it all. You've been at every single playoff game up there in Detroit. The atmosphere feels and seems just past electric from outside looking in. You can feel it throughout the entire city, I assume. Like, it is a full vibe change for an entire town with what this Lions team is doing. Is that an accurate depiction of what's happening up there? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And uh, I wasn't there last night, but I watched a lot of videos this morning. Even at the Wings game last night, the entire crowd chanting, you know, Jared Goff, Jared, you know, so, like, you feel it everywhere. And I can't, you know, and I'm not even – I haven't played for five years. I can't go anywhere right now without people wanting to talk about this team and asking questions. And it's it's exciting, man. It's awesome. It was the uh, this is what a lot of us former players tried to do, you know, when we came to Detroit and, and all failed at it. Um, it's cool to be a little bit of a tiny part of it, you know, watching from up close on the sideline what they're doing. But this city right now, man, is on fire. And, and just what a great time. I mean. The Red Wings killing it. You know, Michigan obviously winning the national championship. Don't give me that face. The Red Wings are killing it, Pat. Oh, um, and, we got, and we got the Lions now, man, with a chance to do something special. So uh, the vibe around this town right now is is you can feel it. I mean, it's electric. And I think there, people are going to be surprised in San Francisco at how many Lions fans make the trip. I talked to, uh, you know, John Kuhn, who does a sideline for Green Bay last week. I think they estimated maybe 3% um, Packers fans at Levi Stadium. I saw a report a couple of days ago that they're expecting probably twenty. I think it was twenty twenty five percent Lions fans, man. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be awesome to see a lot of blue out there too. We're one went away from doing something that the Lions have never done before. And I think we talked to you literally the first training camp that MCDC was the head coach. You've been there through it all seemingly from the beginning of the build all the way until now. At the beginning, MCDC was obviously mocked and ridiculed by a lot of people wearing suits and makeup on TV, talking about sports because of the approach he was taking to lead the team and to lead the Detroit Lions. Not only from the kneecaps, but whenever he had the helmet on, when he was crying after some losses in his first season, oh, and 10 at the beginning. Beginning, and all he did was just pitch the same thing it felt like was there a moment that you can recall when it felt like everybody has finally bought in or he at least got his guys and Brad Holmes got everybody in there that like okay this was the vision in which they were pitching or is it just kind of been a slow build and a slow maturity into what this team has become now which is the exact thing that Dan Campbell said he wanted for a football team TJ I think it was slow throughout the first year and a half. You could see improvements. Um, look, a lot of us watch and we're like, okay, they still need a little bit more talent. You know, I think the, the, the admirable part is they're getting a lot out of the guys that they have. Um, and then you started to see it last year and all of a sudden it's, it switched, man. What did they go? Eight and two the last 10 games. 
uh, and you're going into this season saying, okay, was that a flash in the pan or is that sustainable? You know, boom, they rip off 12 regular season wins and uh, now two of the last, the last two playoff games. So uh, it really has happened fast um, over the last probably, you know, 25, 26 games. Um, and, but it is, it is, it, I, I have such, you know, I, I admire Brad Holmes and, and Dan Campbell for just sticking to their plan. You know what I mean? Like they've had this plan since they came in day one. And I think they would even tell you, we knew it was going to be rough. We're going to go through some rough times, but we're going to stick with it. We've got patience from ownership, which is huge if you're a coach. Um, she's the Ford Ham. And, mm-hmm. she's yeah, the Ford she's Ford Ham. Ham. and, you know, Ford she Ham. came out last year when they were one and six and said, look, we're not making any changes. I trust these guys. These are going to be my coaches, which I think was important for the coaches to hear because sometimes if you feel pressure, now you're going to start changing everything up, right? You're going to start panicking a little bit. Dan Campbell didn't do that. He stuck with it. Uh, they, stood, they stood true to what their plan was. And even at opportunities this year where – you know, the trade deadline comes around. Everybody's sitting there, what are the Lions doing, man? Go get some of these guys. They, they're sticking to what they got. They're sticking with the locker room that they've got, the players that they trust, the, the type of personalities that they want in that building, and it's paid off for them. And, uh, you know, even talking about the roster now, and look, it, it, San Francisco is, I think, the top of the top. You know what I mean? Like, they, every position, they've got a ton of cap space, obviously, having Brock Purdy, you know, on a rookie deal. Um, but you look at this Lions team, and, They can match up with them. I mean, you look at the offensive line. You look at the tight ends. You look at the running backs. Both quarterbacks playing pretty damn good. I think it's at least on offense, uh, you know, in a a short time that Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have been here, they've been able to build a juggernaut, man. And it's been uh, been impressive to watch. Patience is a virtue and a value. Shout out to Ryan Clark. Mm -hmm. And they were able to withstand the grenades that were coming at them. Not everybody can, especially in the modern era, because it gets very loud very quickly. Mm -hmm. People want change immediately. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, you feel like the never-ending onslaught of bullshit is never going to end. It does. Just a wave. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then whenever the wave breaks, and then you're on to the other side of it. That is kind of life in 2024 from somebody that maybe has experienced quite an ocean beach as of late. Mm -hmm. But with Sheila Ford Hamp, last year she went out to present somebody and she got booed. Yes. Booed, yes. Big time. She got booed and then there was the first non-sellout of a game in like 30 years or something yep, like that. Yep. So I think some of the fans potentially didn't have the patience, yeah. but the people in powerful positions did, and now they're reaping the rewards of that. It's beautiful what's happening in Detroit, and there's a reason why, you know, America's team is maybe becoming, Whoa. Come on. you know, the Detroit Lions. Yep. I was watching the <laughs> national news this morning, TJ. Everybody was like, I like that team. I like that team. And then he showed Dan Campbell and some of the stuff they're like, I like the way he – that, that guy's guy. fun. Mm-hmm. That guy's somebody that I would like to hang out with. It's like – it's awesome to see it all working out. Speaking of, yeah. for a guy that we've got to see it all work out for, and it's much better now than it was before, Foxy has something for you, TJ. TJ, how's that offensive line looking? I know Frank Ragnow's banged up. I know Jonah Jackson's banged up. In part two, can Lions fans finally expect James Houston to play this weekend, the secret weapon? You got 45 seconds. Yeah, uh, offensive line, look, Frank's going to battle it out. You know, we, we know that he's a warrior. Um, Coyote is probably going to get the start at left guard like we saw last week. I think they've got a lot of confidence in him. That interior is going to have to play really good this week. Uh, I think our tackles are going to be fine with Chase Young and Bosa, but the interior guys are going to have to dominate. And flip side, James Houston, look, I think it all depends on – uh, what the coach, how, how much the coaches trust him. You know, that's a, it's a long injury. He's coming off of week two. I think he's this time of year. You're not practicing a whole lot in pads. You're not going full speed. So some of those guys, edge rushers, it might be harder to get back into shape. If he does play, look, hopefully it's on an eight to 10 snap count and say, go out there and third down and get the, get the, get the quarterback, right? I think that's what his special, specialty is and where he's proven he can bring value. So, um, both those things, man, both, both those things are going to be really important to watch the next day and a half leading up to game time. We appreciate you, TJ. Good luck this weekend. Killed we'll be it. back in three. three. There is a crowd of about 30 people moving through the back end of the business field here. And in the middle of it is this black Samoan man who has become the most famous human on earth. Great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the GOAT, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There's thousands thousands of people skipping class to come see your big ass. Listen, there is thousands and thousands 
of you skipping class. It doesn't matter if they go to class. Moana is, is one of the best animated films of all time. Okay, can't, can't wait for the live action. Thank you, yes. Thank you. We, you're welcome. We talk about Moana. What can I say except <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> And we talk about Mana. Honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. Yeah. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was my way just messing around. I couldn't even let it bury its guts. Sprouted the tree, now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with my way when he's on a breakaway. Oh. And the temperature here on my skin oh. is a map of the victories I win. Look oh. where I've been to make everything happen. Look at the me, me, new Maui, just tick it to tapping. That's it. Wow. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Still got it. On the Samoan side, Polynesian side, we have a word called mana. Mana is spirit, mana is power, mana comes from in here. It's the thing that gives you goosebumps, it's that thing you feel, it's that thing when I walked out and we felt this thing, this yeah. is mana. Yeah. Yeah. This mana. is mana. mana. It, it's very, very, very real, and you could feel it. Wow. Little things like, I don't get driven anywhere, I don't want to get driven anywhere, I don't like chauffeurs. Keeps me in my way, just a little grounded, like yes. I could drive myself everywhere and not telling some guy, hey, take me here, take me there. That is something I'm gonna start saying, like, yeah. Because when they open you your door, you feel so bad. I could open my own door, dude. They're trying to be courteous, it's their job. But also, the day I stop opening my own door is the day I become a big old bitch. Here we go. That's a big cup. Oh. Oh. Iconic sound, you guys know it. Ooh. This special Terramana toast goes out to Passion. Congratulations on your show. Very proud of you, very proud of all you boys, and to all of you. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank you for the support. Keep kicking ass. Cheers. In my world, when I sit down and we're talking about movies and all this other shit, it's never this. It's never this, this, back with the boys, and you. So, I appreciate it, and this one's to you. Thank this you, boys. To you, pal. Cheers. You. Cheers. All right, we're gonna take five minute break here. Oh, hold on, one more. If you're some man! The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Feel Good Championship Friday, January 26, 2024, hour two of the program starts now. Football! As it's championship weekend, just 48 hours from today. Woo. Now, the Royal Rumble's tomorrow night, yeah. only available on the cock, peacock. And then Sunday is NFL Championship Sunday, where the AFC will battle at 3 o'clock on CBS, and then the NFC will battle on 6.30 on Fox in Santa Clara. We are pumped. We are juiced. We are jocked up about everything that's taking place and we are incredibly lucky to be here the toxic table also here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt Ty there's some Green Bay news we're going to dive into mm, here in a matter of nice. moments one half of the hammer Dad Cowboys Tone Diggs is here and joining us live from Attica in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion a Super Bowl champion Whoa. a Ryder Cup winner and the current president of Ohio ladies and gentlemen AJ Hawk AJ Hawk wow yeah. What's up, guys? Hey, I love uh, I love Feel the Beat and being back. That's a nice little playoff edition. Now, I'll tell you, I really enjoy it every time mm -hmm. we do it because I looked up at the clock and it was 12.50 already. Yeah. I'm like, damn, we just motored through about 40 minutes very quickly. Got some good information, too. As we bounce around these championship games, obviously we heard from John Menedakis about what's going to happen in Baltimore. That place lives and dies, he says, mm -hmm. with the football team in the Orioles. I think the Orioles were 
were terrible for a long, long time. Long time. Long time. And then there are they – They made their now. playoffs last year. They're a good young team. Okay, yeah. so they're back. Lamar Jackson's locked in for a long time. So congrats to Baltimore. Baltimore yeah. doing it. Just like Detroit. Congrats to Detroit. Wow. Hell yeah, let's uh, go. You know, and obviously in the Bay Area, they've had ups and downs. They have winners. They have teams leaving town. It is what it is. What do you think you're most excited about looking at this weekend? And did you learn anything from the Feel the Beat folks uh, that maybe changes a viewpoint on anything happening this weekend? Well, I mean, it's scary to think about San Francisco being fully healthy, and Debo's the only guy on the injury list, they say, and he looks good. And obviously, they, what do they say, trending? He's trending to play, yeah. Debo's going to play. Like, let's get real here. He's yeah. he's looking, especially after the whole yeah. CJ, GJ situation, all of that coming back uh, into play. I'm excited right for there. this. but Go back. That's the big one. That's yeah, the see, one. We'll Go back to the beginning of the video. Okay, so here he doesn't dance with his left arm. Kind of alarming. Okay, he's Wait, dancing. He's, he's messing me. with us. No, this, boom, pause. Mm. That, Jeez. huh? He's there playing. Is. Okay, that is the. Now I'm no doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, a lot of people who aren't doctors have a lot of thoughts. Sure, true. On things, yep. especially oh, as yeah. of the last Sometimes. three, four years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, we've been right in the epicenter of that particular thing. But if it's a shoulder issue, and you can tell with his first dance that he did there, he kind of, you know, let's relax this thing. A little. Let's keep that thing down. If he's able to lift this thing over his head like that right there, and this is on a Wednesday or on a Thursday, so no tour at all. I don't think not that we don't know what San Francisco's rules are on tour at all. Green Bay doesn't give it out, which nope. is wild that you guys have ever won a Super Bowl. That is a couple on, of them. You're playing without a tag team partner that everybody else has. Seemingly, I don't know what other teams are not doing it, but him being able to do that on a Thursday, and then did you hear the CJ GJ video after the Philadelphia Eagles? San Francisco 49ers game this past season in the offseason, what he said about Debo Sam, I'd never heard that until old Lombardi himself, David Lombardi, brought that up, AJ. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw that. I mean, I don't know if you guys want to play it again. I know it's not long, but man, he's it's pretty bold, a uh, bold uh, video to come back now that the fact that they are matching up in the NFC Championship game makes it even better. I, I can't wait to see their initial reaction when these guys first oh. see each other on the field in warm-ups. Well, what are we going to do? Well, Debo mm -hmm. comes out with yeah. Trent, right? Mm -hmm. And Debo, oh, Cleveland. Yeah. yeah, Was it Cleveland? Yeah, it was he Cleveland was. on the sideline where they were fighting. And then the Trent game. came. Bingo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, you know, and not that anybody on Detroit's scared of anybody. No. They got Frank, no. they got Frank Ragnow on the injury report for uh, toe, foot, ankle, knee, and, and back. back. Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> the... That's the <laughs> So obviously there's a lot of tough guys on that team. Here's the video of CJ GJ talking about Debo Samuel this past offseason. Another thing, bro, listen, don't be friendly when you see me. October? Because you be yeah. so flashy. After he got hurt. You better hope, bro. You better hope Holy all that talking shit. you doing when we see y'all, whatever round it may be, because I can't guard you. You can't run routes. Okay. You're running back. All right. You're running back. So I ain't even going to sit here and play with you, little boy. Because you got a little bag, people Riddle. gave you a little clout, man. You ain't nothing, bro. Stop playing. Casual. Well, just standard hey. back porch live stream. <laughs> yep. Matter of fact. Yep. Yes. Hey, we love rivalries. We love rivalries. We always get pissed when you say, oh, well, these guys are best friends trading jerseys after the game Amen. and everything. Well, it's safe that they uh, that's not going to be happening this game, it feels like. And we are all massive fans of CJ GJ because he's old school throwback. Mm -hmm. Does not give a mm -hmm. single shit about anybody's feelings ever, except for his own team. Sure. Love that. Everybody Maybe. on his team has always loved him. But whenever you think about deep, definitely. So whatever, definitely. He is loved <laughs> by his teammates. But like, whenever you think about Debo potentially coming back, is he going to play? It's like, well, we saw on camera, he was able to do this. We saw him dancing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we just heard what a man who's going to be on the other team has said about him this year, just a couple months ago. Debo's playing. That's good. Dude. Debo's yeah, yeah. back. Good dude. Debo's playing. Not going for Detroit. Debo's back, though. Mm -hmm. Debo's back. Feels like we got the best football teams available. Everybody seemingly healthy, you know, which yes. is obviously a massive piece of making it this far in the season. But last weekend, George Kittle said he thought Debo was going to score three touchdowns. Well, you think about, you know, the, the game plan and what it was going to be. And I know CJ GJ say you can't run routes, little boy. You can't do anything like that. <laughs> but like Shanahan, you know, Shanahan has ways. Oh yeah, you know, he'll get them to just make people open. Now with this Aaron Glenn led defense, oh, yeah. be able to shut down what is seemingly, except for the first three and a half quarters against Green Bay, which I assume going to use similar system and similar strategy. To, will they be able to slow down the machine enough for Jared Goff in that offense to be able to keep up? 
I think a lot of people are thinking, yes, yeah. they will be, which would be such a historic Disney-like story for this Detroit Lions team. And I think CJ GJ thrives off this because just a week ago, he had that whole thing with Baker Mayfield, and on the first drive, he has an interception. So I love this. This is the exact toughness a Detroit defense needed. I'm so excited for Sunday. It was a deflection, I think, but still, hey. We'll take it. When you're around yeah, the ball, yep. when you're around the Bingo. ball, good things happen. All right, let's talk about some news about things that have happened around the NFL that we haven't had a chance to chat about, but are massive. For instance, Raheem Morris, new head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. There you go, right here. Yeah. Congratulations to Raheem Morris, who coached with the Falcons before, was the interim head coach with the Falcons before, and now he's back as the head coach. Now, obviously, uh, Bill Belichick interviewed down there a couple different times, once potentially on a boat in, uh, in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and then one in in real life and if you listen to Albert Breer on NBC Sports Boston I believe mm -hmm. talking about what Arthur Blank the owner of the Falcons was kind of contemplating it seemingly echoes what maybe we were prognosticating the situation being in Atlanta as well for Bill Belichick and so like I think a lot of this comes down to Arthur Blank wanted to hire and I have that on good authority I know you've heard it too Arthur Blank wanted to hire Bill Belichick the head coach and it wasn't the money I think he was willing to pay him it was everything else that was going to have to happen and the amount of people around him that Bill's going to need here and the amount of people that might be outgoing because of it. And I think people in that building knew, like, hey, if Bill comes here, I'm not, I probably won't be here for very long, much longer. And so those people wind up getting in blanks here. Boys, boys, do it. It's time. Do it. AJ, AJ. AJ. I don't know. If I'm, I, yeah, need some flexibility, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't know with all your muscles and everything. <laughs> I got it. This is what we were kind of talking about. And now, this is not anything negative towards any hire that they had. But as we started to look into why is Bill Belichick not getting suited everywhere, it's like, well, there has to be a reason. Oh, because you hired one person. It's you're losing a lot of people you care about yeah. for a two- to three-year run, yeah. potentially. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that and make that business decision? They also interviewed Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh takes the job with the Chargers. But if you follow along with what Brad, Brett Jukes said, Brett Jukes, who is a Atlanta businessman, I assume, or a Falcons member, or whatever the hell he is, he tweeted out basically the process in which they got to Raheem Morris being their head coach. Ian Rappaport retweeted this thread. Now, it has been put into story mode by Zito. Shout out to the new X, so we don't have to scroll through all these threads. Oh. But he basically explained how Raheem Morris stole the show in these interviews. Really excited to have Raheem Morris back in Atlanta as our head coach. It's been quite a month. Here are some insights from in the room, says Brett Jukes. Raheem's first interview was electric, captured the crew on it, many of whom had not ever worked with him, you know, because a lot of new people potentially mm -hmm. in the building. Arthur Blank's trying to make a change. Second interview, even better. Wow. So well prepared. His time in L.A. has elevated him. Clearly gleaned a lot. Oh, gleaned? Was, go that, was that autocorrect for? No, I think so. For gleaned a lot from, you know. What does yeah. that mean? That means learned? Like, yeah, I mean, you can say that. Yeah, un understood, grabbed, and got an understanding of. Man, you are a bulwark against stupidity on this particular <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Clearly gleaned a lot of learning and experience in an excellent Rams organization. He has a great plan, an unbridled passion to work it. Some critics about how many we interviewed, that's dumb. Don't buy it. You learn so much about the league, schemes, players, right. good ideas, bad ideas, and so forth. Amazing part of the process. You also get to compare the different people and perspectives. It's very valuable. Very bullish on talent in the coaching pipeline. Was blown away by several of our candidates. Blown away. Wow. Several interviews planned for four and a half hours, once six. Why? Guys were so good and compelling. Most of the people we interviewed will be head coaches sooner than later. I believe that very strongly. Okay? Atlanta. Metro. Business. It, sports. Enterprise. Enterprises. There complex is. organization and is sometimes hard to understand on the outside. We are a portfolio company and a lot of other NFL teams are not. Operating a stadium that hosts everything from World Cup to college football to pro football to soccer to concerts to weddings to a myriad of other things is more than most NFL teams. Don't compare staff structures from a team that is just a football team to what we are. You can't. AMBSE is Falcons United, MBS, and some other things. The transition of responsibilities began on or around January 7, 2023, when Rich McKay was named CEO of AMBSE. Steve Cannon has been the steward of it. All right.
Atlanta United. Yeah, okay. Back to the coaching search. Thank God. That's what we're here for, Brett. Yeah. Yes. I could not be more proud of my colleagues and how this search was executed. Incredible experience. There was never any panic or discombobulation. That's nuts. From first day, we knew how much our job was coveted. People, plural, wanted this. We ran our process. Congrats on that. Yep. Way to go. Way to go, Atlanta. Some people dictated, I guess, a third party was potentially involved in this entire thing. I think they had a lot of people potentially in the mm -hmm. room around Atlanta that cover a lot of things. I think we potentially know one of the people that was probably in that room, I guess. Yeah, probably. If it's just power players down in Atlanta, and that name is just everywhere. Yeah, that would make sense. All yeah. the time. Uh, but they got it right, they said. They appreciated Raheem Morris. They went through the full process. And with all those people who are seemingly potentially very successful in what they do, how do you think Bill Belichick was talking to all of them? You know? How many times do you think Bill Belichick looked at, what are you, okay. Not a football yeah. guy. You know? You do? So Raheem Morris going in there and crushing it, I think showcases an ability that obviously the others did not have. Raheem Morris is ready for it. They're excited for him to come back. The Atlanta Falcons social media team has been posting old videos from Raheem Morris dancing and being beloved by the Atlanta Falcons players and Arthur Blank. I'm excited for this next chapter down there, and I assume they are as well. Congrats to them seemingly winning the headline right in Atlanta yep. and with their fans and also getting an incredible coach that all of his ex-players have come out publicly and stated this is the guy good for Raheem Morris we're all pumped for him yeah good I mean I feel like this goes this is more excuse to like hey this is how great Raheem Morris is and he came in here and stole didn't steal this job but he took this job because we felt like we just could not let this guy out of here we have to give him the gig but then going back to old buddy's tweets the whole all of that stuff when he laid it out like that, it does sound like a very a unique structure. How was Bill ever even in the running for that gig? It sounds like that, that does yeah, not sound like a place you could plug Bill Belichick in. Uh, so how many? What's this? Because I, I picked the pe I hired the pe I I chose the, we did the, I did the. A M B, what is it? A M B S E. That's what already... Albert Breer said too, and in, in when he said the Albert, or, uh, you know, Blank wanted to hire the the head coach, Bill Belichick. He said the head coach. He didn't, I guess, sure. he didn't want all the rest of it. Is that what it is? Arthur M. Blank Sports Entertainment. Oh. A-M-B-S-E. Oh. Sports okay. Entertainment. That's of course. Right. Absolutely love that. Uh, I think now they got to find a quarterback. Yeah. Yep. they got to figure it out. I think both um, – GM and head coach reporting directly to Arthur Blank as opposed to Rich McKay now. Mm -hmm. He has kind of been moved out of the reporting spot. So there's different levels now of leadership over there at Arthur M. Blank Sports Entertainment owned Atlanta Falcons. Uh, but, you know, good energy, good juice. Let's see how it works out. Yeah, it's awesome. And you mentioned you saw a video from way back when he was the interim at Atlanta of Raheem and Arthur Blank like kind of vibing together. So clearly it's a match made in heaven. You brought up the last part where Rich McKay, they're not answering, you know, the head coach and GM are now answering to the owner, not mm -hmm. the CEO. I assume that was one of the first things Belichick told him. Like, hey, so when as your time as the owner, like what, what happens? The GM and the coach, they, they go to you. Like, this is what we did in New England. I would talk to Bob. <laughs> and, you know, I assume Arthur Blank was like, no, 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 they go to, oh, they go to the CEO. Rich, the Rich comes to me Rich if you really need something. Yeah, then he tells me. And then I – Did Rich found Home Depot and build that up? Did Rich – is that what – No. He, no. What has Rich done? Hey, so kind of, Rich kind of just been here. Rich is the one that decides what you hear. Bill was probably flabbergasted. Blown away. On the Rich McKay is the guy that's deciding. No offense, Rich McKay. Betty's great. No, no, no offense. Don't they have a pass? Don't they have a pass with Rich McKay? Former GM of the Bucks, uh, I am being told. But who? Bill and Rich McKay? I thought Bill and Rich McKay may have had some crossover somewhere. Sounds like you think they don't like each other. Is that what you just said? No, I don't know. I thought I thought I saw early on that that was a possibility of Atlanta because Rich McKay had a had a big position there that he and Bill had a relationship. That would be oh. funny to hear Bill Belichick though explaining why. What do we? So you own the team. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's your money. The team. All of it. You built the companies that funded owning yeah. the team. AMBSE's mine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you'd get here. It's. No, I'm just in the suite. Just yeah. hanging. What are we doing? And Arthur's like, you're right. What are we? Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what, are we? what are we doing out there? We don't know if that's the case. We are just talking about a situation I that mean, as the news breaks, you think to yourself, 
oh, there was something that Arthur felt like he probably wasn't hearing or going properly through the filter gatekeeper source of information. Uh, how do we get it to the talent, the brain here in this entire thing? Not that Rich McKay's not, once again, but also, how do we do this entire thing? Uh, I think they're in good spot going forward. Sounds like everybody's invested. Speaking of good spot going forward, how we all believe, the Chargers bring in Jim Harbaugh to be their next head coach and pair him up with Justin Herbert, who we heard from Mike Greenberg is in absolute love with. Justin Herbert is the best young rookie or young quarterback in the NFL, is what Harbaugh told Greenberg at a mutual friend's funeral. Rest, Rest in, peace. in peace. Rest in peace. Tease in peace. Rest in peace, yes. Oh, when was this funeral? Last year. Last year. Wow. So, or last year, uh, I don't, Greenberg didn't Do we know whose funeral it was? Yeah, I, I think it was off-season 2023. He said mutual friend. We did not get the person's name, but we would like to yeah. let that person know that yeah. we're bummed out. Yeah, so may you rest in peace. We're thinking of you. We are. Are we bummed out why that they you, were talking QBs while you were lowering laugh. somebody into the ground? Or so, what? follow up. I assume it's a football person if Jim Harbaugh's yeah. there. Yeah. So, they probably yeah, love the it. fact that there's football conversations mm -hmm. happening right. at their celebration right. of life. But the fact that they are no longer living gives us this piece of information from G Greenberg that I think is a big deal mm -hmm. if you're a Chargers fan. He has loved your quarterback since before becoming your quarterback's head coach. It's like he's a quarterback guy, too. He has gloves on. He's patting them on the shoulder pads. He's batting them in the helmet. He's catching for them and yeah. giving them the ball during warm-ups. He is an integral part of that person's life going forward, and he is all in on Herbert and has been. Speaking of all in, the Harbaugh family, all in on football and each other. Here's John Harbaugh, head coach of the number one seed in the AFC Baltimore Ravens, talking about his brother getting the Chargers job. My thoughts are we play him next year. So uh, football. we're looking forward to uh, all of it. You know, I'm just very happy for him, proud of him, excited for him, excited for his family. Uh, he, I, I heard my, my mom and dad told me that he called back in the evening and he found out that uh, all of his kids, starting with Addie and Katie, had their bags packed already. They're ready to go. So they're excited too. So it's going to be great. He's well deserved. Man, and uh, sucks. <laughs> I'll say this: the Chargers just got themselves one great coach. Yeah, get us the hell out of here. You know how cold it is right now. L.A. <laughs> it's so cold right now. We're going to Los Angeles. Sounds great. But the way he talks about his brother, obviously admirable. And we saw the moments on the sideline when they both went and saw each other, and in the tunnel and everything like that. But that family just knows how to coach football, AJ. And whenever I think you're in a football family, I think it's a big deal. Which Chargers fans? The Chargers posted that clip, and I think Chargers fans were like, "We got a super football guy coming in here," and that's beautiful. It is beautiful. That seems what they're all, all about. Like, that's all they care about is their family and football, and they know how to lead people. That's the, the thing that feels like the whole family. I know the dad's an absolute legend, and I'm pretty sure when Jim was still playing, his last, like, six years in the NFL, he was technically an assistant coach for Western Kentucky and would scout and, like, do things and work for his dad somehow in the offseason. I don't know exactly how it worked, but I heard that from somebody. Okay. Oh. That sounds like great journalism. I think it's real. I'm dead serious. I think it, you could look it up. Breaking. He was legit, like – I don't know what his title would have been, but he were, for five or six years while he was still a current NFL player. So he spent his offseason scouting people for college. I think he like, recruited players. I think he, yeah, I think he did everything. Wow. So this guy just all year round ball. When there's offseason, no, I don't want offseason. Mm -mm. Well, what can yeah. I do? I'm well, my dad. Let's go and do some recruiting in here. His entire being has been ball. And I think that is the type of person that you need. And that's the only type of person that's going to say, I uh, just won a national championship. I need to go get a Lombardi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I need to go ahead and get out. You just checked it, I just Yeah, during his professional playing days, Harbaugh spent eight years as an NCAA certified unpaid assistant coach for his father, okay. Jack, at Western Kentucky. Atta baby, AJ! Let's go, Hawker. Doesn't it make sense? Like, you read that and you say, oh, yeah, of course. Well, yeah. He probably has been a coach technically since he was three years old. Yeah, same with John, which is why their teams are so damn good and damn dominant. Yeah, there's a clip going around of the Harbaugh brothers, the Har Harbaugh's dad, um, I think Brian Billick and one other former coach, and John Harbaugh's talking about how there was a, you know, there's a gym class and how his dad always instilled in him, you know, you have to win, you have to win, you have to win. And then uh, I think John talks about how, like, no, it wasn't winning, it was just competing. And the gym teacher went to, you know, Harbaugh's parents like hey your son your son jim's too competitive like he he takes this stuff too seriously like you, you really shouldn't be doing this and um what mr harbaugh said jim and john's dad was like if you take that out of him i'll follow you to the ends of the earth <laughs> like ba basically saying like <laughs> i'll kill you if you try and change yeah, jack harbaugh is the legendary it, father yeah and it's i think any 
you know, I'm sure AJ has heard this numerous times, especially after watching how he plays cards. Anybody that makes it to professional athletics, normally going to want to win in everything. You know how you hear people be like, oh, I hate losing. It's like, Everybody hates losing. Everybody yeah. hates losing. <laughs> right. uh-huh. You know, like, yeah, but you know. You don't get it. Like, I was with uh, I was with one of my wife's friends. Sure. Okay. And they were playing cards. And the way this one particular husband was talking about his wife hating to lose was making me, like, just get so uncomfortable. Game's over. Get out. She's so competitive. She yeah. like, hates <laughs> to lose or whatever. I'm like, everybody hates to lose. Yeah, but not like, not like her. I'm like... Okay. All right. I understand what you're saying. But it, if you've ever encountered any professional athlete or a professional thing, it's like, yeah, if we're shooting a bottle into a trash can, there is potentially $20,000 on the line just need to compete at all times. Well, they'll flip a chessboard before they'll lose to you. It's like, yeah, those people probably going to make it a long way in life, which is why Jack is saying to the gym teacher, if you take the edge that my kid has yeah. over everybody else that hates losing, okay? Everybody hates losing. There's different levels to this shit, though. That's going to drive him to work harder. That's going to drive him to probably be better in school because he has to be better in school because he has to be academically sound to be able to compete in college. That's going to that's gonna keep him on a straight and narrow, probably. It's like the competitive drive is one of the most important things, I think, to success in the sports world. And there are so many different levels to it. And I think it's on display all the time and all anybody says about this Jim Harbaugh character is most competitive human we've ever seen and it's like damn Tom Brady Mm -hmm. that guy Mm -hmm. yeah pretty competitive Michael Jordan pretty competitive human being Peyton Manning pretty competitive Serena Williams pretty competitive human being it's like yeah that is the difference between this up here and like this and then all of this here is the competitive stamina Jim 60 and that son of a bitch is never stopping, I don't think. It's not going away. I mean, competition is what, you know, like, sometimes it's uncomfortable when coaches want to say everything's open for every year, every job is open or whatever, but it's true. It's human nature, no matter who the person is, to get a little bit comfortable when they don't have as much competition around them, I think, no matter what the profession may be. So sometimes it sucks and people don't love it, but competition makes everybody better, like from the top to bottom. That's all you have to have it, I think. When I lost some of my competitive juices, life got a lot better, I will say. <laughs> like, probably happier. Were you, are you, people are probably much happier if they're not really competing over everything. Oh, my God. So much better. Just so much better. More relaxed. <laughs> yeah, like just like, yeah, it's just so much better. Like, I was never a poor sport. Certainly talk shit. Mm-hmm. Of course. But when I would lose, it would like, at night when I'm laying down, it's all I would think about in anything. Just like miserable almost for anything. And then when you get to a stage where you lose it, which is why, like, the Bill Belichicks, the Tom, mm-hmm. these people that last forever, I'm like, the amount of stress they put themselves through to keep that competitive juice so high is just absurd. Like, I don't even know how they're able to do it. But whenever you can just go do something, it's like, yeah, it's all right if I suck today. That is such a nice feeling. It's great. It is, AJ, I don't know if you ha- have even got to this point. You, well, it's like, yeah, different. There's different things you know you're probably not going to be great at then you can you can kind of relax with it i think now granted if you're like try if i'm trying to like but also though you don't want to you don't want to self handicap too and go into everything because you're scared and never you'll never achieve your best because you're going to say oh i'm not you know subconsciously you don't try as hard as you can because then you can tell yourself oh, i didn't really care about that that I, happens a lot agreed but you see some of these competitive freaks where they're just like yeah. everything they do it's like super intensity and like yeah. Okay. Like golf. You see it on a golf course a lot with people. Yeah. Bingo. Like, yeah. I'm like, are you, uh, <laughs> did anybody think that you were going to do good today? No, you did. Oh, okay. you hate to lose. Yeah. <laughs> we get it. Mm-hmm. You hate to lose. But it's like, if I'm, if, and I think you're probably the same way. If I'm trying to make a shot and I don't, yeah. then I'm like, you son of, you lost. Yeah. You're a bum. What the hell? But if I'm just like just shooting and I miss, like it's all good. Like, okay, it's cool. We lose, it's cool. You're playing golf, you hit a bad shot, whatever. But if I'm like trying, yes. like if I'm like really trying to do, that switch is one that those at the, can't flip. You know, yeah. I think that is yeah. the, the can and, cause issues in people's personal lives at times too, because yeah, of course you got to take the good with the bad. And there's, you might be reckless at times and make some crazy decisions if you legit just cannot ever lose at anything you do. And Jim, I heard, can't. Nope. 
Just yeah. can't do it. Always we're, trying his hardest. We're chugging milk. We're squatting uh, in cleats. Yep. <laughs> there was a picture that hit the internet of him wearing cleats in an airplane. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Asleep. I think he's asleep with the cleats on. He's chilling. Oh, he sleeps in them. Legs crossed, in cleats, first class, living his best life. It's like, that human is one of one. We need to cherish it. Speaking of another human that's one of one, and we alluded to it a little bit earlier with Raheem Morris uh, signing down in Atlanta. Bill Belichick's not going to have a job next year. Nope. 15 wins that's away from the all-time winning record. 15 wins. Now, we're not saying he's never going to be a head coach again because one year, different coaching cycle. Mid-season firing happens to somebody, that ownership can potentially now go talk to Bill Belichick. And I guess there's still a couple jobs open. Yeah, hey, there's yeah. still a couple jobs open, so there's a chance that he gets it, but everybody's saying long shot, probable not. How it goes. So is Bill doing TV next? What is uh, is Bill oh, doing man. advice? Is he on he the boat to. next year? What's he? What do you think Bill Belichick does next year? Man, he, he's gonna have a tough time. Like, it, think about that. What his life will look like. It, say we, it comes around springtime when you're, usually the players are coming back for OTAs and stuff, and Bill doesn't have anywhere to go. Yeah, he's got to be involved with football somehow. Or that'd be awesome, man. If he goes and does some TV does some analyst work, and then he knows, like, hey, I'm getting hired real soon, either during the season when they get rid of somebody or as soon as the season's over, someone's snatching me up. I would like to let everybody know, and people know that, uh, yeah, I pay people for their time, mm -hmm. especially if they make our business a massive amount of money. That is business, I thought. Mm -hmm. I think that's how a lot of people think things are. We'll see. Until it's about us, and then they're like, People are supposed to be paid what they're worth? No, that is not. Wait, I thought you were just fighting for that. No, what? Well, what the, well, no, it's no, it's a it's different. Well, uh, wait, uh, the he wears a tank top. Uh, the yeah. So shut up. But <laughs> that I will be. I want to let everybody know. I will make this promise that if Bill Belichick is going to go do TV. Oh. Old Pat McAfee will be in the running to try to get Bill <laughs> Belichick yes. to join our program. The amount of questions, just every, as soon as I see him, and that might be a reason why he doesn't want it. True. But our group of humans, mm -hmm. just never-ending questions to Bill Belichick, who literally knows everything about the NFL. Everything. Mm -hmm. Every game that's ever been played, seemingly he has a Rolodex of all of it. Mm -hmm. Every player that's ever been great, that's why he was great on that Top 100 show, yeah. because he didn't do any prep. He just walked in there, sat down. And like, here's a guy from 1924. He was the first ever. Stop. I got it. Fullback. Yeah, he did. What was great about him was, and Bill does the full breakdown, and after what we saw on College Game Day, he's got Moxie, too. Yeah. yeah, He's great on TV. I think we'll all be incredibly lucky if that's the case, A.J. Hawk. If if he decides to do it, and he and you know if he doesn't, he'll probably he's competitive. He wants to be good, so I think he'll be great. Like that's the thing. But does he want to take that leap? That's a little little different lifestyle. Yeah, I don't know. It was what was weird was hearing Greeny today go to break one time, saying, "Have we we may have seen Bill Belichick coach his last game in the NFL?" And they boom, they go to break. No. Like, I don't know about that, man. That's the thing. Like one year off, a lot of people have. Now he's seventy. He'll be seventy two. At the end of this next up, but I guess sorry to cut you off, but did, is there more need for him next year? If if there's not a whole lot of demand for him right now, what makes you think a year off will do it? That happens, right? In that kind of oh yeah, uh, yeah. oh yeah, usually that, that is normally yeah. like big Mike uh, because I'm saying we were surprised by this though how oh, yeah. the little in demand he was. Yeah, I think the Albert Breer point that was made that kind of echoed what we were just kind of yeah. firing off at the hip about could potentially be the thing. That'll still be a problem next year. But if one of these teams, you know, we saw with Nathaniel Hackett, I guess, a couple years ago with the Denver Broncos. But let's say, say one of these teams gets it completely wrong. And they were thinking about maybe mm -hmm. Bill exactly. Belichick. And maybe they're a team that's like, you know what, we didn't want to do it last year. We didn't want to pull the trigger. Still wants to do it. We'll go after it. And maybe there's a team that's really close. And they're like, two years is cool with us, if that's the case. We'll get into it. What if another team goes up for sale? I mean, yeah, there's, exactly. There's like so many exterior factors that one year from now, you have no clue what's going to be the case. But if he remains in second place forever, 15 games away. There's just no way. After trying to get another job and the NFL basically saying no to him. Boy, I'll be excited to hear Bill Belichick speak whenever he goes on a speaking tour about how, you know, I don't want to say aggravating that probably is, uh -huh. but I would assume for him, lifelong mission has been to go get this. And then basically 31 teams, I guess 32 teams are like, 
Not today, old man. Yeah. <laughs> Take a seat. That's wild to me. You have to imagine that they're – I mean, it'll be the same thing. kind of happens every year. But, like, look at teams like the Jets and, like, put the Rodgers stuff aside. But, like, if they – if something happens and they miss the playoffs next year, like, they'd probably be okay with hiring Bill and kind of blowing everything up because it hasn't worked. Like, look at the Cowboys. They're already not extending – Big Mike, like if they, I mean, it kind of seems like it's Super Bowl or bust. If they don't, I mean, if they limp into the playoffs and get beat in the first round or don't win a Super Bowl, does next year Jerry say like, okay, we kind of missed the boat on that last year. We're not going to do it right now. But but now next year they kind of, they underperform again. Like there will be, you would think, three to four teams that whether it's, hey, we're, we're good with blowing everything up and bringing Bill in and tr- kind of trying to go for broke and win a, a Super Bowl or you know a couple even if he's only got a, a few years left like it's just impossible to believe that he's going to go through next hiring cycle too and people will be like ah you know I, I don't i don't think so especially if that's the only reason is that people do, they don't they don't want him to come in and kind of blow everything up I mean, if I'm John Mara, I'm looking at Dave's and Joe Shane and saying, hey, boys, get out. We're blowing this thing up. <laughs> yeah. Bill Belichick, get in here. Let's do it two, three years, get another ring. Why not? Bruce was staying earlier today. Yeah. He was like, what are we, 30 people we got to fire and move on from? John Mara has been a- answering questions about why the team sucks sure. forever. You think he, And he was like, what, today, what, what are we even? And there's been a lot of people that have thought that for certain fans, but then there's been a lot of people who are like, this is the right call not bringing it in. Yeah. And that's been wild to it, me. It's nuts. Because there is a chance, I guess, that he just can't coach anymore, can't win anymore in the modern era, can't reach the players anymore. Is that is that why you think some people are saying that I, this makes sense that nobody wants him? I genuinely don't know. I think that is part of it. I, the firing, of course, of a bunch of people, too, when he comes in is part of it. I, I think this year might be a time where he kind of sits back and doesn't coach and he's Grandpa Belichick first, but I also think he reevaluates his own – situation like does he want to be the GM and the head coach of a team more than he wants to have that record at the end of the day like I think that there's a chance he might even talk to a few GMs around the league like okay fine I could probably make it work with this guy the most Bill Belichick thing of all time is he's gonna be the head coach of Navy this season <laughs> it'd be sick I saw Ken Niamatololo just got a head coaching job in San Jose yes San Jose State, State I think his coach their coach went to oh somewhere Arizona, maybe? Arizona, yes. Thank Cannot you. wait for college game day next year. Everything's the same. Yeah. It's not. Every player's at the same school. <laughs> That's yep. right. Yeah. Coaches. Nobody's, nobody's in a new conference, nothing. Every, yeah. And then those first, like, six weeks of college game day, we're talking about all of them. Yep. Don't get a name wrong. Nope. Don't mispronounce anybody's name. Don't you dare. And if you place a quarterback, wide receiver, running back, or any position – of skill that you're going to talk about at the wrong school and say the school that they were at last year or maybe the completely different school that they were at two years ago or a guy's in his ninth year yeah. playing football mm-hmm. in Miami, it's like you're the biggest dumbass in history. And I take that to heart. So I am staying up on those Friday nights trying to memorize that thing. I got flashcards up oh, until yeah. like 3 a.m. And boy, the movement this particular transfer portal season <laughs> Has been bananas. You know where they're all headed? Where's that? Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Of course. You guys. And now this Michigan team, let's talk about this as we're here because Harbaugh going to the Chargers, this is a perfect wrap-up of this entire story. The Michigan team, now there's 30 days where there's a window where the transfer doesn't count because your coach that recruited you and brought you in is gone. So that's kind of a breach of that whole type of contract. So the NCAA says that that's okay. We just saw the situation with Alabama happen where Nick Saban retired. So then there was a 30-day period basically where anybody, <clears throat> Ohio State, hmm. C.J. Stroud, A.J. Hawk, mm-hmm. of course, all the mm-hmm. Buckeye legends from the Buckeye crews, yep. The cuckoo bruise mm-hmm. that's Naturally. taking place yep. everywhere out there uh, can come in and, and make offers. How do we feel about the Michigan team? We think similar situations going to happen. Twenty-eight players ended up leaving Alabama. Eight post the Kalen DeBoer hiring. Twenty beforehand. Obviously, McLaughlin the center. Caleb Downs, the best player in football, is what everybody says. The safety's mm-hmm. out of there. Numerous other five stars. Are we expecting the same thing in Michigan? I, I don't think anybody's really m- mentioned. Me neither. I don't mm-hmm. think so. No, I, I mean, it, because they kind of have a plan in place. If they hire Sharon Moore, which is how, they haven't officially done that yet, have they? Not allowed they can't. to. They State law. Yeah, seven oh, days. Oh, yeah, okay. So he's got to wait. But especially with, when you have somebody in place, I think, that has been there, mm-hmm. I don't think you get, like, the mass exodus as you might if you brought somebody else in. I, who knows, though? Is he going to bring on – 
is he going to hit the portal a little different than maybe Harbaugh would hit the portal and try to bring some other guys in? Oh, you think he's going to maybe try to move some people out so he can make some room? Uh, I mean, I don't know, but I'm saying I don't see a bunch of guys leaving, but who knows? Yeah, and I don't think anybody really expects a bunch of people to leave until, like, somebody comes in and goes, we'll quadruple whatever they're paying you. Yeah. Uh, That's the new – in Michigan, though, you know, I feel like Michigan men – They can. I feel like Michigan men feel the same way. Now, I'm not saying Alabama people don't feel the same, especially in that Bama football program, but the amount of, you know, it's different SEC. Like, hey, let's oh, yeah. let's do this entire thing. Kalen DeBoer is the first one that's really had to battle yes. this entire situation. Doesn't feel like it's happening in Michigan. Good for them. And I think Sharon Moore, it is a nice passing of the baton uh -huh. for the next great Michigan team. Also, how much different is it when you have a bunch of guys graduating or going to the NFL? So some of those other guys who either – like at Alabama, weren't playing. I know that wasn't the case for all of them, but it's like, hey, you're gonna have there. There are opportunities here for you to kind of, like you don't have to leave to play. Like we have a, but we're we're gonna be a completely new mm -hmm. team next year. You kind of already know the scheme. Like nothing from a football standpoint is really changing because this guy's been here. He's been a head coach for a couple games, so like it, it kind of it's not as jarring and crazy as like. Hey, this guy outside the program is coming and being the new head coach. You don't know if he's going to like you. Like you, I have a feeling like a lot of these guys probably already know where they stand a little bit. Congrats to Michigan, man. Yeah, it did. They got it right. Okay. Seemingly, they got it right. You know. Now, granted, does any of it matter until we watch football in the fall? Yeah, right. No. On Peacock, right? Yeah, Peacock, yep. Fox, Fox. What? CBS. Why? Basically every network. Every, yeah. Except for ESPN. The college football rights are insane, and who knows if that's yeah over or not? Right. Yeah. There's like new deals happening. There's parcel deals that are mm -hmm. taking place. There's expect expectations taking place. All we know is Ohio State tried to rig the deck. Yep. Oh, what do you mean? Better one at all. Trying to bring some different players in that, that wanted to come to the school? Well, and also you guys hire Anthony Schlegel to come back and run. Mm, can't not, be doing that. Oh, is that fair. out there? Is that out there? What did they say? Well, I saw it on the internet. You tell me. Why don't you, hey, friend of Anthony Schlegel, who was at your 40th birthday party in boots, looking awesome. Yoked. Absolutely yoked Cowboy and shredded boots? out of his mind. He just looked like a dog. Just Cowboy that. boots or? Oh, great question. I wasn't looking at it. They're shit kicking. combat. Yeah, They're shit kicking. He, he was showing so. me. Uh, he Steel was toe? He was obviously doing perfect form squats. Oh, okay, cool. And, uh, With a cigar in his mouth. Yeah, and... Been there. Incredibly passionate, but he motivated me to continue the evening. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything you could possibly want from a human, mm -hmm. he delivered in about a four or five minute conversation, Anthony Schlegel. Yep. Formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, he was the director of bodies, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> whenever Urban Meyer was down there. And then now he's back with Ohio State. Is that real? Can you confirm that? I mean, yeah, if it's out there publicly, yeah, he's, I think, he, I don't know what exactly what his title may be, but yeah, he's, he's in there early with the boys, no question. Wow. Yeah, baby Schlegel. There it is. The Silver Bulletin uh, reported that Anthony Schlegel is back with Ohio State in strength and conditioning role per the OSC, OSU faculty database. The Minister of Toughness served on the OSU staff from 2011 to 15 and played linebacker from 03 to 05. The Buckeyes bring another former player home. Obviously, Bobby Carpenter's working out with the team. Schlegel's back in the weight room. James Lordnitis is in the linebacker room. Wow. Ryan Day's spending money. Bill O'Brien's doing the offensive coordinating. Woo. Here we go. The Ohio State Buckeyes lost to Michigan three times. Yep. They watched Michigan win a national mm -hmm. championship. And everybody in the Buckeye State said, this shit stops now. Never again. This shit is never happening again. <laughs> but what if it doesn't work? Oh, no. oh boy. Oh, no. Burn all of it down. You got to try. You got you to give it your best shot, right? Well, you guys told McCord, we ain't doing this with you. Yeah, you yeah. stink. Get out. <laughs> is it I, don't, I don't remember. Is that how it happened? Yeah. yeah. Bingo. Know. That Those words were said. Is it going to be Ryan Dover? Oh. And then, well, Bill uh, Bill O'Brover. Yeah. <laughs> Bill O'Bover. Yep. Anyways, nonetheless, congrats, Ohio State, taking advantage of the new system. They're not the last school that is going to do this. Certainly other places are going to do this. Michigan State at some point is going to get back into the game because they oh, got yeah. multiple billionaires. Man. Good coach and hire, too. Man. John Smith is going to lead the boys back to the promised land. Man. I don't know about that, but. Let's, let's slow down. Let's see how these other teams do in the Big Ten first. All right. Uh, big money can change a lot of things. Yep. And college football is certainly one of them. Congrats to all the boys getting their money. Yeah. Whether they did it or not. Love it. You know. Speaking of getting your money, um, <laughs> uh, there was a story that came out yesterday that we were 
flabbergasted by the number of bets, yeah. I think, more so than anything. And then we saw what the account got up to. Yeah. And we said, damn, pretty good bets, actually. Very. By this particular NFLer, Kayshawn Boutte. Boutte, yeah. Wide receiver currently for the Patriots, formerly of LSU, was either he was arrested in Louisiana for placing more than 8,900 bets. 89. <laughs> Hundred bets. That's not the amount of teams he bet on. Like he didn't have a hundred leg parlay, and that counts as a hundred. No. no. Each bet individual. Eighty nine hundred bets Damn. while underage with a fake account. Some of this occurred during the twenty twenty two season. His last at LSU. Now they said that his fake account names were like Kayshawn Butte double o one and Kayshawn <laughs> Butte one. So it wasn't like he was trying to hide it, but certainly. Wasn't supposed to be doing that, both as a player betting on himself and on LSU. Yep. Not good for the sport. No. no. Underage doing it, obviously not good for anybody. But he started with like 100, they said. Got up to $556,000 yeah. in his account. But he used most of that money, obviously, to make even more money. Right. You know, because oh, no. how much money is enough money? Uh, never enough. Yeah. Uh, let's keep it going. At one point, he would end up withdrawing $50,000. So if you make 8,900 bets and you get up to $556,000. Now, granted, we do not believe at all that players should be gambling. We think it's bad. It's the only thing that can kill pretty much mm -hmm. sports yes. is if the integrity of the game is lost. And I know there's people saying script writers and the officials and everything, but I feel like through the playoffs, the officials have been fantastic. Now, Taylor Swift, obviously, and Sean Smith's reffing. Mm -hmm. But the last time Sean Smith... You know, ref the Chiefs game that was away yeah. was against the Colts, and he caught a 15 yarder on Chris Jones at the end of the game to basically win the game mm -hmm. yeah. for the Indianapolis Colts. So there are certainly those conspiracy theories that pop off about the scripting and it being in control. But like, if players are betting on games, like that's not, can't happen. Like, we all agree on that. We all understand that. We all believe in that. But he had to have told somebody when he was up to 500 and some thousand, he said, hey, like, listen, I'm a, I'm a shop, dude. I'm on a heater. I'm actually a dog. <laughs> I'm actually 5X. I'm 5X. I'm up 5X right now. And it allegedly all for himself and for LSU. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was never against himself, obviously, or against LSU. Over how many years? Do we know the span of all these? I mean, that's a lot of bets. How long did it, like, how, is this like 10 years? No. I, I don't know if they gave Five time years, three years? 2022 Two years. and 2023. So that is 730 days. Yep. 8,900 bets. A lot on himself and on LSU. Now, this has been something that's been talked about in the boxing world and in the fighting world, where if a guy is an underdog and he's about to fight somebody, somebody in his camp will go hammer the money. So not only does he win the purse, but he also wins a bet. That's been chatted about. And there's been other stories of players gambling on their team and things like that. It's all bad, we agree. But at some point, we got to acknowledge that maybe Kayshawn Boothe knows what's going on yeah. and is a pretty good little gambler, A.J. Hawk. I mean, is uh, what's old buddy's name? It's all in the book. He might want to hire him on his staff. That's not a bad idea. Well, Billy Walters said Billy uh, Walters. that you got to judge the weather. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to look in the line. You got to look in all those things. Kayshawn Butte was like, this team, sorry, I'm watching on film. <laughs> We're about to yeah, kill this team. Look in the mirror. He got arrested, which is bananas. Yeah, what? Absolutely. Over gambling, though. He got arrested because they found all of this stuff. And then they, how long have they been on him if they just finally arrested him? They've been, they've been doing this for a while, I'm guessing. Well, they had stack a case. Yeah. Had digs. I, I just, I asked him if he knew how many he had because Gumpy, that is, because that man is not afraid to bet on any Anything. sport. Any what game. was the college basketball game the other night you told us we needed to pull the trigger on? Chicago State. I don't think that was it, but oh, Cleveland State. Yeah, Cleveland State. Cleveland State. Cleveland State. Do you know how many you've done over the last year or two? Uh, the last two years, sixteen thousand seven hundred and three. <laughs> Jeez, sixteen. So no, it's possible. It's possible. Certainly. We're, I mean, I mean, we're up three hundred sixteen units. There it is. I knew he. Was, he's is that good. No one gambles right. more than him. We're in the green. We're in the green. Yeah, for, for Butte, what does make sense is twenty twenty three. He played in New England, so like it. it the only games they played at LSU would it, would that be the time frame they're talking about? Because then he's probably been on March Madness and stuff as well, which makes sense. We will assume more information will roll out, and uh, people were the doing the math on X. If it was one season, it worked out to about twenty bets a day. 
That's nice. doable. Betting a lot of baseball. Yeah. Betting. And got <laughs> yeah. He's not, well, LSU, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Skeens, Donna? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He would have been. Angel Reese. He, he walked past him in class one day. He's like, nobody's hitting this guy. Skeens, yeah. you go today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Get on yeah. there. Not good. Once again, cannot reiterate that enough. We're having a laugh about the situation. Yes. Not good, though. Very bad. And if he used to, were to get cut from New England, I know there would be an entire fan base that is livid because he's one of those guys that everyone loves. Well, yeah, he's a sharp. Yeah, well, not to mention yeah. if, if the Patriots get Jaden Daniels. I mean, that was Keyshawn Boutte was his number one. <laughs> uh, number one storyline right now in the soccer world Ooh. Oh no! is not that Burnley needs to win a damn game no. or they're going to get relegated down to a league. Lower than the USFL. Basically. Way lower. Wait. No, they're, they're boys looking good, I heard. Mm-hmm. Me too. I hear that every week. The hat's got that symbolic stuff on it. Yeah, the eye. Yeah, the Illuminati. I saw that, obviously, yeah, on the internet. Yeah. Don't know what's going Illuminati on. Illuminati what? <laughs> Dark web. <laughs> of course. Self Reliance, good movie, by the way. Everybody should watch yeah. it. There's a team that's motto is you never walk alone. Mm-hmm. Great motto. You'll never walk alone. Love that. We're in this thing together. They're about to be walking, not alone, but without a leader. What? Oh, no. Gomps, this morning, your fearless leader, Jurgen Klopp, uh, uh, said, no. I'm just tired, dude. I don't want to do this anymore. Jurgen? This guy has led you guys to what? The best that Liverpool's ever been, and now he's he's at the point where he's admitted that I just, I'm so sorry. I'm just exhausted. I'm not the right guy for the job anymore. You're a diehard Liverpool fan and obviously a Burnley fan now at this point. Um, what does this mean? You guys suck again? Is this mean Liverpool's done? Uh, like, what, what, what is this? Is this Jur- guy- no. Jurgen Klopp brought Liverpool back to the top. Like before him, we hadn't won a league title since 1990. We were middle of the table, finish eight, finish 10th, no Champions League. Like, Jurgen Klopp saved Liverpool and he embodies everything that a scouser is. We knew this was coming maybe two, three years from now, but for it to happen out of nowhere when we're in first place in the league right now, it is... You thought Vic Fangio was bad. This is devastating. Devastating. Jurgen, thanks for your commitment to Liverpool. He's going to coach somewhere else next year, isn't he? No, well, he's going to no. get refreshed. Yeah, he's going to take a nap. He he's going to enter Miami. He did say a year off. If, if he coached... Oh. I, I could take that. I, uh, oh. My goal is he coaches England international team. Oh, United Hell States of America. Uh, hey, 20 M's. Why not? Jurgen Clover. Oh, well, it's, I guess we just learned it's Jurgen. Oh, well. Speaking of, uh, dumb. <laughs> speaking of European stuff, Joker. Man. Yeah. Oh. Joker lost to a redheaded Italian that doesn't have a yeah. vowel at the end of his last name. Yeah. Redheaded? Late last night yeah. in the Australian Open. What? And this sinner, I believe is his name? Yep. Hmm. Dog. How old is this guy? Does anybody know? Young, very young. He seemed very young. Yeah. Took Joker out. Now, obviously, Novak Djokovic mm-hmm. is a guy who has been at the top of tennis for a very long time. An absolute stallion. Also, a man who's pretty set in his ways. Yeah. You know, he did buy an entire medical company uh, for five hundred million dollars just a few years back. Whenever he was being attacked for his decision. During COVID. Yes. And that was also the Australian Open, I believe. Because he wasn't allowed to go play. Yes. So he said, oh, is that right? I'm the wrong one. And he spent $500 million on a medical facility. Yep. Then he came back with a vengeance. Yes. <laughs> Spiteful. I am going bananas here. And then last night, he ran into a 22-year-old phenom. This Italian kid's really good. I was up last night late, mm-hmm. so I got to watch it. Not a big tennis watcher. This kid brings the thunder. Oh, His yeah. serve was Djokovic was not ready for the serve. I don't think I don't know shit about with tennis. Okay. Yeah. I play both handed. I don't know anything about it. Play ping pong, love pickleball. What? I understand batting balls over nets. I enjoy it. Never got into tennis. But watching this center dude, he's fun. Oh, so yeah. good. He he really worked last night. It was beautiful. Well, and we were watching Alcaraz the other morning in the Hawk House, and it was kind of one of those things you mentioned. None of us are, you know, 
huge tennis fans. But when it gets down to the, like these guys, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. And apparently, Sinner and Alcaraz, like that, that's their kind of rivalry where we've been used to the Djokovic and Federer and all them. Those two, I believe, are like the future of men's mm-hmm. tennis. And Nadal, I assume, is yeah, just going to yeah. be in between them. Mm-hmm. And before we get off ESPN, we'd like to give a shout out to the internet pastor in Colorado who. Uh, you know, just stole a few million dollars from his followers uh, in a cryptocurrency scheme, allegedly, because God told him to. Yep. The Lord told him to remodel his house. Here he is on the internet. Charges are that Caitlin and I pocketed $1.3 million, and I just want to come out and say that those uh, charges are true. Okay. So there's been $1.3 million that's been taken out of, I think it was a total of $3.4 million. But out of that 1.3, half a million dollars went to the IRS, of course. and a few hundred thousand dollars went to a home remodel that the Lord told us to do. Okay. okay. Oh. So hopefully the judge will forgive him yep. and her because when the Lord tells you to remodel the home, when the Lord tells you that your house is ass mm. and trash, you got to do it. How do you think Chip and Joanna Gaines exactly. got so damn popular? Exactly. Now that Lord right there, a little different than most Lords, but that pastor... I assume going to jail for a long time. Yeah, probably. A couple million dollars in fraud is a big deal. And hopefully the Lord will protect him. Mm-hmm. Always. But I'm feeling like the Lord might turn his back. Mm-hmm. It's about to be the greatest weekend of all time. We'll see you on Overreaction Monday after two championship games on Sunday. Royal Rumble tomorrow night. You are the greatest people on earth. Take care. Nailed it. Nice. Wanted to get the internet pastor on ESPN. Sure. Uh, it, yeah, that was... I love that you did that. But he said 500 went to the IRS. If it's if it's truly a church, it's tax-free money, I thought. Well, it's cryptocurrency business, though, that he was running. That oh, was, oh, okay. So this is, okay. Yeah, got I mean, it from cool. that. Good job, pal. I hope the bathroom's nice. He said so in the whole video, not just the bathroom. I mean, there's a lot of things, potentially. Full the kitchen Lord, remodel. Yeah, the Lord is going to need wow. to make up for it. He better hope that the Lord drops into the judge's ear. Sure. For, mm-hmm. You know, for yeah. him and his wife. Uh how did he get that many? There's three million dollars alleged. This guy, you heard? Was that one and a half speed? The video I saw, it might have put that thing at one and a half, two, two x speed. Son of a bitch, did it? it was a good talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was auctioneer. Good. Yeah. Not one single be. flub. Did you see that? Send no. it. No. Not one flub. Go ahead and send it to get three million bucks into a cryptocurrency scheme. And he said, "We didn't have an out. Okay, sue us." And they are. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Promptly. Send us to jail. Well, they probably they will. are. We started cryptocurrency without an out. It was his kind of give and take there. But anytime you start tossing on at the end, the Lord told us to. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? I think you can play, stay with you a straight face. That. that plays in court. Yeah. Does, does it? Yeah, yeah it does. If in you... Colorado, too, that's a super duper religious yeah. state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that'll be uh, that'll be good. But when I posted that video, I had a lot of people respond. You know, because a lot of people watch this show. Mm-hmm. Well. Not anymore. I mean, it's it's after. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that. Five minutes ago. A lot of different demos of humans and styles of humans watch this particular program. We have a religious contingency to watch this program. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Bobble Bell, baby. They support this guy? They support him? No. So when I put that tweet out, a lot of people just immediately afterwards, this is what's wrong with everything that America has become around religion. Utilizing and abusing the Lord's name for self-profit and self-everything is the problem with a lot of the things happening in religion and the way God is talked about. Preach. So I had a lot of people telling me, like, please do not let this be your indication of what an actual relationship with God is like. Do not let this deter you. This is a scumbag, pretty much, is what a lot of the religion... And I was like, hell yeah, way to stick up, you know? Mm -hmm. Because there was a lot of people saying, classic religion right here Mm -hmm. scheming money out of Mm -hmm. people and i saw like a little i'm like okay we got i didn't expect i was pretty and by the way whatever makes anybody happy we just love them yeah who cares you know Mm -hmm. there's so many different religions there's so many different beliefs there's so many different opinions now granted how many people are going to be right at the end how many different groups can be right in the end and will we ever know you know will anybody like whenever you pass away will there be like a by the way wrong this way. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The way some people talk about it, yes. But I do hope at some point we find out. You know, like I, th- I hope whenever they say life flashes before your eyes, I hope like as your life flashes before your eyes, they pause at maybe a moment where you met somebody that was in the religious part that was right, whichever belief was right. And they're like, and right here was your option mm-hmm. and your opportunity. And remember, you said, 
I ain't believing that. And then boom, you go back there and then you're gone. So I'm cool with whatever you believe, whatever people, you know, buy into. But we think we should remember that as we go forward is that we have a religious contingency that watches this show. And God bless you, whichever one. Yeah. God bless you. God bless. I am so pumped to hear that. I did not expect that at all with this particular program. Yeah, that is incredible. And to what you said about the life, uh, life flashing before your eyes, there have been studies where people, right before they die, they will scan the brain waves and kind of follow them. And the brain does go nuts right before people die. So that theory is true. I would have thought that that guy, the pastor, would say that God told us to do the remodel. Turns out it was the devil telling us to do the remodel we we just couldn't oh. we couldn't decipher the two because he's so deceitful Works in mysterious ways yeah and then he could use that as a sermon bingo mm -hmm. look at us yep look at Ooh. us we've committed our entire beings we've gone on mission trips we obviously right. host this live stream mm -hmm. so crypto we started a business and when the devil creeps in and gets his paws on you anything can happen let that be a lesson always have your guards up that's right it's the way it goes so he created his own like dogecoin is that what it was yeah something like so. that yeah mm -hmm. yeah Think so. Go I on. mean, three million dollars. That's so how many much. followers does he have that he get people to actually exactly buy into that? Just like we're talking about with Kayshawn Butte, real quick. Yeah, like, not good that he's gambling, but <sighs> five X is my money. That's <laughs> good gambler. Good, good gambler there. Not great. Can't have it. Don't love it. But for what it is, this guy obviously an idiot, a wild animal, a con artist, a man who utilized the Lord's name to self profit and make other people's lives worse. Three million bucks? That's he's running a pretty good he's Last running a big he's unbelievable. Grinding, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of money. It's a Joel C money. No, 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 it's no, not. no. Oh, really? What are you talking about? Hundred X that maybe. Bingo. Then we're talking Joel. Wow. Something's that arena. Money. His own yeah. arena. That's Jeez. well, it's hard to get in that arena, remember. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Home, yeah. we'll never find is. out. We know that. Getting a peep at that some bitch's net worth would be <laughs> Man. That guy. He's a sack of shit, but hey, he's a he's a, he's a good <laughs> businessman. Now I don't know. Us his hair is estimated to have a net worth of over fifty million, with his church taking in forty three oh. million a year in collections. Yeah, okay. Way more than that. Way more. Than yeah, that. yeah. He probably has some investments, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Forty three million a year in collections. His house alone looks like it's forty mil. Donner in Texas. <sighs> mm -hmm. What a great state. One of the best. What a great state. I fucking love Texas. Storm comes through, though. Don't touch the no. steam. No, 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 we should have gone. It's in Houston, Pat. We were in Houston we in a rainstorm. We should have stopped by. With our cowboy hats on? Help! Yeah. Help! At we the door? We went yeah. in. Get the fuck out of here. They come on the loudspeaker on the ring camp. <laughs> we got peasants outside. Yeah. Yeah. Move. Get the poppers off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's get to a break. Last hour is going to be a good one. Hell yeah. We got Snoop Dogg joining us in about 10 minutes, obviously, yeah. talking about Underdogs, his newest movie, which is out on Prime today, alongside Mike Epps, Andrew Schultz. Slide. Do we know anybody? It's star study. There's a bunch of people in it, yeah. He's ex-athlete, superstar. You know, kind of out of touch. Oh, obviously. trailer. Trailer looks good. Yeah. And then he's coach of a youth football team, and the kids seem to be hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like Marshawn makes a cameo in it. For some reason, I thought I saw Brad? a commercial. No, no, no. Marshawn Lynch. Oh, Marshawn. Mar yeah, you, uh, you said Marshand. <laughs> oh, did I? Did. Well, Brad, Brad Marshand did score an overtime winning goal last night. Maybe that's why I still got the Bruins on the brain. Bruins doing good this year. Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me think. Um, yeah, they're thirty nine and nine. So if if that's technically what good. are the pens? What are the pens? Just so thirty eight and ten, I think. Not as good. We'll just leave it at that. No, but where though? Like thirty nine and nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's not pretty bad. Not many people are oh. sniffing thirty nine and nine, brother. Sorry about it. You guys it. love the, the regular season, don't you? The no. Bruins are the best regular season yeah. team in the history of hockey. And the best thing it's about this, we got a jersey hanging because of it. Last oh, year they had the there. greatest regular season in the history of the NHL, and it seems like that trend's going to continue while AJ almost burns down his fuck. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. You Fucking house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you said Caught a hot one. 39 oh. and 9. Yeah. 30 dash 9 dash 9. Oh. Oh, you thought I, I said 39 and 9. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 30 space 9 space 9. And where are we at? Uh, the pens are 21, 17, 17 and 6. That's not bad. Nine games away. Yeah. You are out of your mind. Well, that's not exactly how it works, but we're scoring on our own goals, dude. We, yeah. are, we aren't even playing hockey yet, Second and we're within... Oh, you're done for, dude. Where are you guys at right now in the uh, hunt for the playoffs? 21, 17, and 6. 
Yeah, ever heard of it, dude? Right and Sidney Crosby is. That's all that matters. I mean, you guys are acting like 30, space 9, space 9 <laughs> it is something that the Bruins aren't happy about. We've lost more <laughs> games already than we feel we have last year. So all right, let's get fine. to a break. Uh, in five minutes, four minutes, mm -hmm. we'll say. One of one. One of the greatest humans to ever exist. Who's starring in a new movie that is out now on Prime. Snoop Dogg will join us. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. Bye. Bye. What's that coming down the track? What's that coming down the track? It's me, machine in the red and black. It's me, machine in the red and black. Nothing finer in the land. Ain't nothing Drunk, obnoxious Georgia fan. <laughs> Georgia fan. Go dogs! Go dogs! Go dogs! Go dogs! Go <laughs> then you go to pick up a box and uh, a bong falls out of there. What, do you have anything to say about that situation, or what do we got going on? <laughs> that is not a bong, first of all. Hey, <laughs> the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart. Yeah! In the SEC, you got to do that every week, man. It's how easy this year. <laughs> like I said, there's an open invitation. Call Greg Sankey, come down here and get you some of this SEC if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to make a small contribution to the uh, Marine Corps Scholarship Fund. Give at least 15000 and see if, if Richard will match. I'll match. 15 k from match. us. Awesome. 15 k from you. We need Dick Smith, FedEx well, CEO, yep. 15000 That's 45000 to the Marine Scholarship Fund. And I believe today is the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. So, ooh, oh! University of Georgia legend, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Stafford. Yeah! What's up, Kelly? Shout out to this man winning $1,000 on this Feel Good Friday when A.J. Hawk... ladies that told me <laughs> I did not deserve to wear the jeans on my chest. They told and they me. said I needed to get out of Chuck's Seafood Restaurant. This told is David Pollock's town. I told her right back to her face, I want to let you know, you can say and think whatever you want about me. I love this Georgia Bulldogs team. That's what I want to hear. You should take this in. It's pretty cool. I don't hear that. You need to, because you've done a lot here that has been fantastic. Have you ever thought anything bad about a kicker before? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Trust what I taught you while we were off air and just let it rip. Yeah, Hot Rod was getting a little bit too many tips. We're going Georgia! 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 Oh, you're hyping it up. Georgia! Let's go! For $85,000 in drenched jeans. fans and any place that barks at everybody when they see them that's a town for me i got the bulldogs winning big today yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir uh let me tell you a little story about these statistics troy palomalu okay 
fucking Troy Polamalu. So we had a fake for the Pittsburgh Steelers that was a 100 percenter. We didn't even have a cancel the goddamn play because it was a 100 percenter. If we ever end up in this situation inside the seven yard line on the left hash, it is a 100 percenter that the C gap will be wide open and we will just part the C to the left. It'll be a touchdown. 100 percenter. We're playing in Pittsburgh, the city I grew up in. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I won the punt passing kick national championship, AJ. National championship, AJ. Congrats. AJ, did you ever win the national championship punt passing kick? Uh, I think I got third or fourth out of four at the Nationals. I'm proud of you, man. Anyways, so we're there in that stadium, okay? A lot of McAfee's in there. A lot of McAfee's in Pittsburgh. I'm going to score my first fucking touchdown, night game, Sunday night football, I believe it was, right here, touchdown. We get into that situation, and I'm like, holy fuck, this is really going to happen. We're like on the six, on the left hash. It's fourth and goal now. Field goal team's jogging on. I'm like, well, fuck, it's about to, I'm, this is, I got to fucking, I'm ready. I am ready for this to happen. So I get out there. I get down. Vinny's like happy for me. Vinny's like very excited. He's like, let's fucking go. Like Vinny's excited for me at this moment. I'm like, here we go. So I make the call. I forget what it was. So I start saying it, right? And everybody's looking at me like, okay, bright eyes. Here we go. Let's get after it. Offensive linemen are dead ass tired. They do not want to be in the middle of a field goal anyways. So they're just like, all right, I don't give a fuck if you die here, but this should work. Let's get some points. And all of a sudden, I go through my cadence. I call it. I get down. And Troy Palomalu's fucking ass goes ahead for however long his career was at this point. I think it was like nine years or eight years at this point. Not a once has he ever gone to this side of the field over here to the left and covered Strand stood right in the sea gap. Never. He lined up exactly where he had lined in film 100% of the time. And then as soon as I got to like the second cadence right before set, he just bounced his little ass right over to the sea gap. And I like stopped everything I was doing. And I literally just looked at him and I gave him like, a, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, why are you there right now? And then I stood up and said, we are kicking it. We don't have a, we have to kick it. We are kicking this. And then I get down, and Vinatieri kicks it, and I jog off the field, and Chuck Pagano comes running up next to me. He's like, hey, good job. What you see? I said, what did I see? Palomalu just fucking went right into the goddamn sea gap. What did I see? What did I see? And he goes, okay, sounds good. Good call then. And that, good call then. And then Vinatieri's like, hey, way to go, buddy. I'm like, way to go? Are we not going to talk about how big of a fucking asshole Troy Palomalu is for what just happened right there? So that's. But it just, I saw the angel of death waiting for me at the, in the Z gap. It's unbelievable. Like, what, you thought I was going to run him over? No way. I'm going to get. He's probably going to strip me and score a touchdown the other fucking. That's Palomalu, bro. That ain't just some your backyard football with your son. This is, these are professional fucking athletes. He'd probably jump over the lineman, pick me up, and run me into the other fucking end zone if he wanted to. That's what he would have done. The hard-hitting safety of his generation, too. It does, I mean, Ed Reed, great cover safety. I don't know that you would have feared him, but... You Ed Reed, I would have feared Ed Reed. Yeah, if I saw Ed Reed in that C-gap, absolutely. E.D. No, he, Reed, boy, the best safety you ever seen, boy. I ain't doing shit to Ed Reed. No, no, Ed Reed would have made the tackle. I'm saying that Palomalu would have shaved years oh, off your life. Oh, my God. Hey, why? Let's... Goal! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay. Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode. The Thunderdome on this glorious feel-good championship Friday, January 26. Hour three begins now. Football is a absolutely beautiful thing, and it has its championship weekend taking place on Sunday. The AFC will battle it out in Baltimore as the MVP favorite Lamar Jackson plays host to the Hall of Famer at the age of 28, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, who are on a dynastic run, looking to add another Super. Bowl appearance. The 
Toxic Table is here. And they are excited about what's taking place in Santa Clara, Woo! where the San Francisco 49ers have been on a revenge tour since the last NFC Championship game when Murphy's Law, what could go wrong, did go wrong in the first quarter against the Philadelphia Eagles as they host the Detroit Lions, who are looking to do something that they've never done in the history of the franchise, and that's go to the Super Bowl. It's a glorious weekend. The Royal Rumble is tomorrow night. Yeah. The Toxic Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Yeah. Ah, Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. A man that's in an attic in Ohio is here. A college football national champion. A Super Bowl champion. A Ryder Cup winner. A.J. Hawk is yeah. here. Oh. And, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, A.J., you look fantastic, by the way. You guys look great. The Ohio State Buckeyes seemingly trying to buck the system of college football, spend more money than everybody else. We'll see if it leads to a championship, because if it does, everybody else will do that good for the players. That's yeah. great. Good for the players. Joining us now is a man who is a world superstar. He could literally be in every single commercial if he wanted to because he is beloved by every single demographic of human that exists around the globe. People don't even have to be able to speak English to love this man. Obviously, he is a Hall of Fame rapper. What? He's an incredible businessman. What? And his acting abilities are something that whenever people talk about and compare, they say, is this guy an Oscar winner? Maybe! With the newest movie that's out today, Underdogs, available on Prime, Ladies and gentlemen, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, Snoop! How are you, man? Hey, AJ, what up, baby? Listen, Snoop, I just want to let you know. Sweet Jane. This is sick, Jane. Yeah. The jacket, too. We were watching a little bit during the break, getting in the mood, doing some Snoop Dogg stuff. Like, this is dream come true for us. Thank you for making time. You're an absolute legend. Yeah. Snoop. Absolute legend. Hey, we appreciate you. Hey. I'm a fan of the show, man. When you first started coming on, I was tripping because I was like, you the first person I seen come on ESPN and say, shit. <laughs> and they didn't they didn't cancel it. I'm like, man, I like Pat. Pat breaking rules. Pat making it easy for the next man. Like, you did that. I appreciate what you did for the culture as far as, like, making ESPN understand that we talk a certain way when we talk sports. Yeah, there's humans. You know, this isn't... And with the way the internet is, this is how conversations take place. And I appreciate you acknowledging that. As you could probably understand as an incredible businessman yourself, that conversation during negotiations was hilarious. I, there's actually a <laughs> I list... There's a list of words we're allowed to say and a list of words we're not allowed to say mm -hmm. that were put in there and those were negotiated <laughs> over. And there was like real hey. give and take. It was awesome, Snoop. It was awesome. Hey, man, y'all push it to the limit too because y'all say it at least 20 times a show. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've been trying to be a little bit more adults, but sometimes when you're talking about some shit that's taking place, Bingo. there's only one way to describe it. Speaking of, hey, hey congrats on another movie, Underdogs. Yeah. Debuts today. You've obviously been promoting it and marketing it. Uh, it seems like a role that is perfect for you and the kids that are playing the youth league football team that you're going back and coaching are hilarious as well how hands-on were you with the making of the movie and how pumped are you to see the world respond to it today well thank you for, for, for saying that pat my football league the snoop you football league is what inspired this picture the kids that i've dealt with the coaches that i you know have relationships with and i just wanted to make something that felt good that felt like you know the kids of today but at the same time a sports movie where you could show someone who was successful, who lost success, but had to go find it by going back to the place that birthed his success, the community that raised him. So for the whites out there, Mighty Ducks is happening, <laughs> but in, in a hilarious way no. <laughs> in a football fashion. We've seen a couple of the trailers and teasers. Here's one I think that probably sets up the movie the best, and then you can obviously tell us if we're right or wrong. Okay. Y'all thought I was a crackhead janitor, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns out I'm a rich ass celebrity. And when I heard about y'all league not being able to find y'all one decent, respectable citizen to mentor you little dudes, shit kind of broke my heart. So I decided to work out a deal with the Los Angeles County Community Outreach Program so you could have football legend Jason 2Js Jennings as your new head coach. Legend. Man, get out of here, dawg. Oh shit, I know who he is. Good looking out. About time y'all put some respect on my name. Nah, he used a fake penis to cheat on drug tests. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. How many guys are in the league now from this Snoop Youth League that you run out there in California? Man, it's over 20 guys that have actually made it. I don't even know how many out there right now. I just found out that Drake Jackson and Lenore from the Packers, I mean from the, uh, from the 49ers played in my league. We had 
uh, Romeo Dobbs, Keyshawn Nixon from the Packers, mm. C.J. Stroud, D'Angelo Ross from the uh, Texans, Jack Jones from the Raiders, Juju Smith-Schuster with the uh, Patriots. I mean, they everywhere. So I obviously, I don't want to give away the movie. I've not seen the movie. No. But I will assume by the end of this movie, boy, two J's, hey, He's a great football coach. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, he's Gets a great done. football coach, and we're changing the world, making it better. You've done that throughout your entire career. Kind of not only gave a handout with the Snoop Youth League, but I heard a story on all the smoke that you told Stack and Matt Barnes about some rapping OGs that potentially find themselves in hard time, and you send them a couple bags just to, like, look out. You've been – you've made the world better, Snoop. It's a beautiful thing to watch from afar as somebody that's trying to follow in the footsteps of somebody like you. You do good shit. You need to know that, Snoop. AJ has a question for you. Snoop, I'm curious about your whole acting career. Obviously, you can do everything, but – Every time you pop up in a movie, you're always great. I remember Starsky and Hutch mm -hmm. watching you pop up, how great you were as Huggy Bear back then. But I'm excited to see this new movie. Like, But people think acting is just easy. They think people can just show up and, oh, okay, I can talk to you into a camera and act. What have you done, I guess, to become such a great actor? Because you're a legit actor in everything you do. And hilarious. Yeah. Thanks, AJ. The hard part is trying to separate your celebrity from that character. And when you're such a big celebrity like me, it's hard to, like, is that Snoop Dogg up there or is that a character he's playing? So what I like to try to do is to really fall deeply into the character and try to take Snoop Dogg out of the character and become who that character is on screen. So when the movie is over with, you believe that I actually played that character and I'm not Snoop Dogg. Any more albums coming out? Uh, I feel like you're always busy, always working. Is this forever? We're going to see in every commercial, new songs, new movies. Is this it? No, you know what, Pat? Great question. I'm going to let you be the first to know. I'm in the studio with Dr. Dre right now working on my follow-up Doggy Style album. Whoa. Okay, so straight out of Compton, one of the greatest scenes is his ass in the lobby of the fucking house you guys were living in, and you coming, mm -hmm. la -da 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 -da, coming down. Just <laughs> yeah. you, anytime you two are together, it feels like magic is made, and that's where we're at right now? That's exactly where we're at, and we both, like, we peeking. So we watching the industry. You know when you when you great at what you do and you're watching, and you're watching the youngsters do their thing? And then you feel like, man, maybe I need to add one more piece to this house that I built to show them exactly how legacy looks when you're at this stage of your career. Because one thing about rock and roll, the older you get, the more you respect it. But in rap, it seems like the older you get, the less you're respected. So we want to show you that you can remain respected and make quality music in the age and the prime that we're in. Okay, is there going to be features or what are we thinking? Oh, you know I'm going to have some features. I'm, I'm down with everybody, Pat, so it's going to be hard not to have features. It's just a matter of who will be the particular features that fit the song and fit the whole concept of the record. You know, Dr. Dre is a, when he makes records, he makes movies. So the record feels like a whole movie. You're getting an experience. You can't skip from song to song. You got to let it play from top to bottom. How long is this process normally for you and for Dr. Dre? Well, I say probably a year take about a year because you're trying to fine tune it you're trying to make sure it's right and there's different sounds and different things that you encounter and it's and then you always want to make sure that it's, it's, it's the best that you've done since the last time that you've been heard and Dre is a perfectionist not so much with me I'm raw but he's a perfectionist so he knows how to clean me up and make me sound right and put all of the right things like a great coach you know what I'm saying like I'm good but I'm better when I'm with him. Yeah, he can pull the greatness out of you. He understands how to coach you as opposed to talking to other people. How much weed are we going through? in one? Are we talking like ounces by the day whenever we're in the studio? Or how are we, how is that whole writing, creating process with the lovely Mary Jane? <laughs> with Mary Jane? Yeah. She's, uh, she's accompanying me on most of my journey in the studio. <laughs> I, I don't leave her behind. I like to dance with her. You know what I'm saying? That's my girl. Yeah, me too, man. Every single day. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Snoop, speaking of the new album and, and everything you've done, we always talk about competitive stamina with athletes and how the greats can just, no matter how much they've accomplished, they just they, they continue to want to win and, and they carry that on and then don't rest on their laurels. How have you managed to kind of keep that competitive stamina in the creative process after being a legend and a goat in the industry and everything you've done for so long? Good question. Um, I compete against me. I don't compete against them. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at me every day like, how can I be better? How can I do what I did? And, and one thing I always say is I never have time to watch my highlights because I got a game to play tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm always trying to keep, keep to it and do it. 
Yeah, but when you see every other commercial is you, you got to stop and be like, hey, pretty good acting right there. You know, you, I think you got to enjoy that every once in a while. When I'm with my grandkids, that's a great feeling. When my grandbabies, you know, whenever they recognize and see, you know, their grandfather doing things, that's the joy that I get. Like if they'll go to a, a store and they'll see an ad or something with some products or something that I have, and they'll send me a video, and that makes me feel good that they recognize. At what moment did it become like, uh, okay, everybody knows Snoop Dogg, everybody likes Snoop Dogg. Been to a couple of your concerts. Um, I enjoy them every time. I mean, the altitude level of everybody there is fantastic. <laughs> but you look around, you got 75-year-old white lady, okay? And then you got 15-year-old black kid from inner city who's never seen a 75-year-old white lady, maybe, coming out, and everybody's having the same exact experience. When did that start happening for you? And was that the same time when every single company was like, oh, we want Snoop. We would like Snoop on every commercial, seemingly. I think maybe like in the... Uh early 2000s, like maybe 2005, 2006, after I created my football league, um, I had a couple of meetings with some people on branding and marketing and, you know, taking it to the next level and just being serious about myself and serious about the things that I do. And I feel like these brands start looking at me and start, you know, approaching me. One of the first things I did was a commercial with Lee Iacocca, rest in peace. And when we did that commercial, people couldn't believe that Snoop Dogg is driving Lee Iacocca in a golf cart and he's swerving him around and they having the time of their life. But once they started to understand that I'm a person, just like you're a person with people, we should be able to hang out with each other no matter where we come from, what color we are. That's what I love about football. It brings everybody together no matter what their backgrounds are. So when you look forward to see me and Martha Stewart doing things together, you say, how did that happen? But you're like, damn, that shit feel good when I see them together. <laughs> Perfect. It's, it's beauty. It's like when people get together and connect and start talking they have the same things that in common it's beautiful to watch you're you're the the human that you can walk into any place and go you like snoop dogg it's like yeah just like chicken nuggets i think yeah man. <laughs> chicken nuggets you know the only other answer is getting a yes on everything go ahead AJ. let's do it pat mcafee and snoop dogg present chicken nuggets <laughs> <laughs> i will follow your lead on the business sense on that one pal but if you need me to eat some shit on tv i will go ahead aj <laughs> Snoop, I know you, uh, I remember you always on the sidelines for USC games, especially back in the day when Pete Carroll was there. Now, Pete, obviously weird, however, he got pushed out of Seattle. It sounds like he still wants to coach. Do you expect him to uh, get another gig soon? Do you think he still wants to compete for these coaching positions, as he has said? You know what's crazy? When he got pushed away, I'm the first person that called him. I FaceTime. I'm like, what's up, coach? And he was like, man, I really want that gig over there. I wonder if they're going to call over there. So he still had the bug, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody going to call me to come do what I do because I'm not done doing what I'm doing. So what I would like to see Pete do is go back to SC and restore order. Whoa, That's what whoa. Like. whoa, whoa, nobody's brought that Hello. up. Nobody's really brought that up. Yeah, just... restore order. He had SC bop. Come on, AJ, you know what it was like. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's we crying. all do. Yeah. yeah, we all remember what that was like. I was in the... I mean, he was prime before prime. Yeah, but you guys yep. gave Reggie a fucking apartment, so Ridiculous. you guys were cheating over there. Remember? No, Pat. no, wait, yeah. wait, Pat, cheating. wait, wait, Pat. Yep. No, 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 Pat, no, Pat. Now we get paid. Okay, all right. Right. Reggie didn't get paid. If you listen to the story, his stepfather did some things that adults do. And he just so happened to become the victim of that. Oh, Reggie yeah. did not control the conversation with, I'm getting money, you're taking care of me. His thing was to be a football player. Just to let you know, Reggie, Lindell, and a lot of those players used to come hang out with me. I didn't just hang out with them on the campus. They used to come hang out with me on the road at my house. Mm -hmm. And these were great kids. These were great. Matter of fact, Reggie, the only motherfucker in the car. Sorry for saying that. <laughs> but Reggie, the only one in the car with us. I'm going to give you this story. One night we rolling Super Bowl week, Jacksonville. We finna play against the Jacksonville All-Star team with the Snoop Youth All-Stars. They still in college. Everybody in the car is smoking. Everybody. Reggie's sitting by the window saying, man, Snoop, can you please roll the window down? Please, please roll the window down. And everybody in the car like, hell no, you finna take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hotbox and Reggie Bush would be an awesome thing. But <laughs> I think what you're saying is like. On his Heisman run. Heisman <laughs> run. <laughs> Shout out to Ricky Williams. Uh, the whole the whole thought, though, that Reggie got punished for that. And with where college is now, I was making a mockery out of it, obviously. What a joke. Like, Reggie wasn't the best player in football Come on. when he won the Heisman. He is. And now there's still problems with the NCAA. Uh, Saban might actually go run this shit, Snoop. Legit. They're thinking about 
Saban potentially taking like a college football commissioner job and maybe making everything straight because the NCAA has obviously gotten so much wrong. Do you pay attention to any of that? I'm watching it every day, and I think a lot of the people say that Saban was mad because the players started getting money and getting control, and that's why he jumped out the coaching thing. I don't know. I'm just telling you what <laughs> I, my feedback is. It's like the players finally got control and finally got money, so a lot of these coaches can't really do what they normally do. Because now you're dealing with a businessman. You're not dealing with a kid no more. And what I like about it is that it's teaching financial literacy mm -hmm. to a lot of these players before they get to the NFL. Because one thing they don't teach you is financial literacy. That's why a lot of these players have bad times. They fall on bad luck and they don't have money or benefits. And they don't get the opportunities that you guys have and these other guys who've been smart enough to put it together. Well, it's a lot of guys you guys play with that's lost right now. Yeah, in taxes, little in taxes, and then trusting the wrong people to potentially do stuff, and then how that world can go. Yeah. Pretty volatile, and you have no idea. You just get introduced to it. I've talked about it a lot, and, um, you know, a lot of people, everybody has stories. But whenever you're just, I mean, I bought a Cadillac Escalade the day I was drafted. Okay, did not get my signing bonus. <laughs> did not get my signing bonus until three months later. That thing almost got repoed. Okay, <laughs> I had to go into the bank with a damn news article saying this is what my signing bonus is going to be. It's <laughs> it's hard. Yes, that's real life. So whenever you're just handed money for the first time in your life, it is very difficult to manage it. And not only you and the money, but the people around you as well. So now in college, they're getting an opportunity to do that. And I do appreciate the feedback on Nick Saban because that would mean that Saban wasn't paying players before then. Mm -hmm. You know, so that so Saban's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. We were never <laughs> we were never paying anybody ever down there at Alabama. You're right. Yeah, exactly. How you get all them California kids to come out there, man, please. <laughs> everybody was paying everybody. Like SMU, UNLV, you can go back mm -hmm. and look at the history of, of sports. It is what it is. Those players are eating peanut butter and crackers if they don't get that pay to play game. And that's just what it's and that's why they had to recognize and say, well now NIL, your name and likeness. We've been getting paid off your name and likeness, but jerseys with your name on it, with your number that you made famous here, then when you leave that jersey still sells and we don't give you no money. So now they just trying to catch up for all the wrongdoing they did. Shout out to Ed O'Bannon and them for creating this with the uh, NBA game, I mean with the uh, NCAA mm -hmm. game back in the day, Coach K. They the ones who first made the lawsuit. I got my history right. Hey, Ed O'Bannon is the uh, at 2K. The yeah. mm -hmm. I got uh what do we get for that, AJ? I know you probably got a check from that thing whenever it got settled. Was it five five or five grand maybe? Yeah, I forget what it was. It just showed up in my house. I'm like, hell yeah, yeah. Ed. Wait Pretty a minute. Wait a fucking go, Ed. Wait a go. California kid looking out. See what I'm saying? It takes us yeah. to look out. Hey, I like it a lot. <laughs> now you talk about California kid. But you're like one of the most famous Steelers fans on earth. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, you are, Snoop. So I had to get your opinion on, on the Steelers this year and, and Coach T, who, you know, a lot of Steelers fans weren't happy this year when things weren't going well, and then there was rumors Coach T might step away. What are your thoughts on the Steelers as a whole now that the season's over? I think they just need to bring in some fresh blood on the coaching staff and bring in some more dogs. You know what I'm saying? That's what we built on. We, mm -hmm. we got coaching that knows how to coach to the, the system that's happening right now. This is not a... 1995 it's 2024 and the offenses that's moving around the way they moving players and doing different schemes and having quarterbacks that's mobile like we need to get that first and foremost and then on the defensive side we got to get our defense back to the point to where it used to be where it's it's like dick lebeau's defense it's mm -hmm. exotic blitzes it's things that's happening you don't know what which safety's coming up this is moving around it's like it's too basic right now it's like we play basic football just to basically make it to the playoffs to lose. Well, Andrew, above 500, but, you know, are you going to win a Super Bowl with that team, that strategy? Probably not. I like that they're looking outside, right? Yeah. As somebody grew up in Pittsburgh, it's good that they're looking outside. Last time they did that, Todd Haley, obviously, had a lot of success quickly on the offensive side of the ball. How'd you become a Steelers fan? 1975, man. I was, you know, watching TV and watching them do what they did. And I was a kid that was inspired. I love Mean Joe Green, Lynn Swan, Bradshaw, uh, Rocky Blyer, Franco, the whole get out. Blunt, no, oh, Mel Blunt mm -hmm. is always one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they would have. <laughs> you, wait till you see that clip back. Yeah. Your face yeah. turns Blunt. sideways. <laughs> It is such a matter-of-fact statement. That crew back there that you're talking about in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. 
is who a lot of Pittsburgh people judge every team against. Yeah. You know, like, this team isn't a Steeler team. This team isn't a Steeler team. That's how all of Pittsburgh thinks, so I assume everybody loves that you're a bit, massive Steelers fan. Also, USC Definitely. fan, we just chatted about it. Go ahead, Con, man. Yeah, Snoop, you mentioned, you know, your relationship with Reggie and Lundell and those guys when they're at USC, and, you know, they were eating peanut butter and crackers and getting in trouble, and now... There's uh, photos of Caleb Williams' penthouse in downtown L.A., and it's like... Might the, be yours. Yeah, <laughs> you might have owned it before he did, but uh, do you have a relationship with him and those guys in there, and how do you feel about Caleb, you know, probably being the number one pick and headed to the NFL next year? You see that jersey right there with the signature on it? That's my guy. <laughs> I met his lovely mother and father. Um, he's a great kid. I'd love to see what he's going to do on the NFL level. He reminds me so much of Patrick Mahomes. I just hope that he gets the right system and the right coach in the right situation like C.J. Stroud got. I'm I'm looking at C.J. like that's how you're supposed to come out as a rookie. Nobody thinks you're going to do it, and then you do what you're supposed to do, and you look good doing it. Hey, it's hard, though, whenever you're that good because you're getting drafted first for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that are number one, normally not great. There's so many question marks of careers because there was never a good situation around them. I think, you know, you think Caleb's going to be able to do what he did? Does in he's electrifying in college football, extending the play, shaking people. NFL, you've obviously seen him in person. You've met him. You know him. It's going to translate into the NFL like you think? I think it can, Pat, with the right system. It's always about the system and the coach, you know what I'm saying? Because you look at Bryce. Bryce is an amazing quarterback, but that system and that coach – just didn't fit him. And then that offensive line just didn't look out for him. He looked like a little kid out there. So it's like you got to make sure that the system and all that works for that quarterback. That's why I respect, you know, Eli and John Elway for telling the NFL, I ain't going there. I'll let you later when you get a new team. Uh, the, the Manning draft night. If that was the in LA, if that was to happen now <laughs> oh, yeah. with social media oh. and the sports coverage. Remember Burrow and Cincy? Yeah, there was a thought that Burrow was gonna do it to Cincinnati. Instead, yeah, now turn them around. Mm -hmm. Okay, going into championship weekend, Snoop. I know you're paying attention. Detroit and San Francisco, Kansas City and Baltimore. Who do you have? How do you see it going? Wow. I see two great games mm -hmm. from the teams that are supposed to be there. And as far as like my movie, The Underdogs. Should I take the underdogs because my movie is yes, called the Yes, definitely, underdogs? right? This is Underdogs okay. Weekend. Okay, Underdogs Weekend. So to me, the underdog in the Baltimore-Kansas City game would be Baltimore. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. And I'll say that. I'll say that. Despite them being at home, despite them having the best record, Lamar MVP season, I say they're the underdog because Patrick Mahomes yeah. don't do nothing but do what he do. Yeah. And this is the first time he had to do it on the road. So it's a new challenge for them. And they didn't look good this season. They dropping balls, this and that and all that. That's when you're not paying attention. Andy Reid got them on deck this week. I think they're going to win. And I think they're going to move on to the Super Bowl. And you like Detroit then too, huh, on the other side? Because Detroit, underdog story, I've never been to the Super Bowl, Snoop. Never been. I would like to see a bunch of Detroit players show up with mink coats, gators, Cadillacs. <laughs> You understand me? The old Detroit flavors from back yeah. in the days and laid out on the sideline would just look like Starburst and Skittles on the sideline. From the <laughs> <laughs> they did say white boy Rick's going to be there. You know, yep. so a little bit of throwback from the old Detroit days. Snoop, yeah. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you, Snoop. Congrats on all the success. Keep going. Keep leading, man. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, AJ. I love y'all, man. Keep doing what y'all do. I'm a fan. I watch it every day. Uh, you should stop doing that, especially because you're in uh, the studio right now making greatness. Don't let us ruin you. Underdogs, available now on Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, Snoop Dogg. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. He's pretty phenomenal here. Yeah. yeah, unreal. Awesome. Reggie awesome. Bush in the back of that car. Yeah. <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> come on! Please, please! please come, come, come on! Let's crack a window! We're going to say drug test me soon, Snoop. Yeah, he's probably hanging his head out there. Yeah. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Face to the AC. Just try, yeah, just you, try think, to get the you think in uh, in combine meetings, have you ever smoked before? <sighs> there was this one time, and you guys are going to understand this, I think. I was so, just, um, so, Stimp's Dog Hot Box me uh, at the Super Bowl. What? Excuse me? I was trying, coach. I had my... They had the they top lock on? Yeah. yeah. They turned off the AC. I couldn't even... So I held my breath for four, four and a half minutes. Pretty good. Good though. lungs. Pretty good lungs. Yeah. But then after you do that, you're real tired. So then the biggest breath I've yeah. ever taken in my entire life. 
I got real high. I was high. I got real high. But I didn't smoke. I just tried to breathe. I was just there. I was just trying to survive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then also the what about the apartment? So well, so here's, here's a whole stepdad. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie just having to being like the greatest human seemingly is what it's sounding like. Being one of the greatest humans of all time, having to explain different situations, just be like, well, so you I, see, <laughs> what had happened was, hey, Reg, just build your own Heisman. Yeah, go, go yeah. buy one. Sure. Take Matt Liner. It's underneath his clothes. He doesn't care. Yeah, yeah phenomenal stuff. Just, oh, where is it? I think it's in my closet. Let me move these. <laughs> oh, there it oh, is. There, yeah. It's right underneath in my drawers. Look at this. <laughs> he should just buy one at a pawn shop. Yep. It's his. He still won it. He still won it. Obviously, he should have it back, but he, he still won the Heisman. Night. And we all, we all. Yeah. Yeah. When we, we were know. in LA, when we were in LA, there were like um, USC, like Heisman winners from USC that were on a bunch of the walls. I think it was Buffalo Wild Wings, actually. And they all still had, red, I mean, that is something that they hang their hat on almost at most times. Is that, is that Reggie Bush has won a Heisman? They stand by that. They will not. Come off what happened? the fact Nothing. that, they, that Reggie is one of yeah, Interesting maneuver over here. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Things cool. are happening. Inter interesting choices we being made. We got the made. fucking uh, brain trust set yeah. up. So. Bruce, we get back yeah, to the, Bruce, the beautiful uh, Who's running mind. Java? Who's, who's going to end up running? Is anybody? We running? need Bruce. The beautiful minds of the dome. Give me that thing. Have come together. Give me that thing. Yeah, go ahead. You can guess. Who's out there? You can guess. Yeah. Yeah. He just the said. beautiful minds. Is one of them great with TikTok? Hey, Bruce, am I just hitting this thing and it's rolling? Breland, am I just hitting this thing and it's rolling? You're going this way, Breland. You're going this way. Oh, we, yes. we, we built this door for a reason. Yeah. He's right there. Yeah, once he starts. Yes. Right. Bruce, right. Bruce, right. this is going to affect my play or no? Bruce looks like a showrunner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish we could him. see him. <laughs> You're talking about this one up here? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Stage <laughs> manager, Bruce. Do we have a speed, right? speed and everything? <laughs> okay, perfect. Spacing, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what's about to happen... On this stage, in this Thunderdome. <clears throat> Let's go back to the. <laughs> yep. Let's re -rack, re -rack it. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. what's about to happen on this stage, in this Thunderdome, is unprecedented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has never happened before. But what this man is currently doing when it comes to picking NFL playoff games might be unprecedented as well. Just a few weeks ago, we saw him post a video standing in front of a truck, I do believe, onto his Instagram, predicting the entire Super Wild Card weekend while using clever analogies and the score. And the only one he got wrong out of six games was when he picked the Philadelphia Eagles because that's the team he is a fan mm -hmm. of. Five and one week one picking games. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Won't be able to. Comes back again. Boom. Three and one. Currently sitting at eight and two with mm -hmm. his songs, wow. debuting his championship weekend song that I believe he wrote in the last day or so. Country music sensation. Football IQ icon. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Breland. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Bring me back, bring me back, bring me back. Okay, when you start, I'm hitting play. Let's get it. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Breland. Two beasts in the AFC, and I know it'll be interesting. QBs with some MVPs trying to stay alive to win the next one. Three seed always on TV, showing Taylor it's a bit obsessive. Oh. Uh. I know the league probably wants to see Mahomes model, but I'm more progressive. Ooh. Oh. The Ravens flocking, it's called an unkindness I see him dropping, Mahomes a couple times And Patrick Queen is the king of stopping tight ends And the O-line, D-line, and alignment I see Lamar out here raising the bar Going 400 yards with his legs and his arms Gotta give Zay his flowers cause the kid is a star And it's likely Andrews finally making his mark then we got the Niners and the Lions hey. Saying friend had a bob it, I won't buy it hey. My mom brought his son, got his wife shining He went to Jerry Goff, that's where you find rings It's been a long time, so they better win But Mr. Irrelevant is better than he's ever been Only taking nails if you take him at his element but I'ma pick Detroit, go and tell oh, a friend hey, Let's go! Had to put it on wax first time on the show And I got it down pat Hey! hey you can hit me on the app, Super Bowl coming up I might have to come back Hey! hey. That was sick! That was fantastic! Wow!
Hey. Thank you, Breland. Hey, we'll bring you, uh, actually, here you go. Just settle up right here. Hey, man. That's your mic right there. Cool. Dude. Bars. Let's go, Breland. Wow. That was awesome. Let's go. So you like the Ravens? Yeah, I like the Ravens. Yeah, I like the break. Ravens. I'm oh, sorry, I'm, I'm putting it up. I like the Ravens. I like uh, I like Detroit. Okay. Oh, Fuck okay. it, right? All right. Lamar 400, arms and legs. Yep. Okay, so let's, you know, let's talk about this. Let's get it. Because whenever you release a Super Wild Card Weekend one, you end up going five and one. Yep. Never been more confused in my life <laughs> about how that, honestly. And I think even whenever we were talking about it on the show, I said, oh, the Eagles one is just like a heart made one. That was the only yeah. one that really felt like that. That was the only one you lost there. That Big was football tough. fan, follow football. How'd we get in? Very that? closely, man. Uh, you know, I tapped out at the size I am now, okay. so I couldn't really <laughs> play for long, but. Uh, big fan of the game. Uh, love watching the love watching the birds. Uh, but as I've gotten older and started to appreciate football and, and sport in general, what it means to the culture, mm -hmm. uh, how it brings people together, how it tears people apart sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big sports fan. Well, you crushed it thus far. Let's talk about music wise. How long yeah. you been in music? And you're from Jersey, I believe. Yeah, originally from Jersey, living mm -hmm. in Nashville currently. Right. Uh, but that's the Eagles connection, South Jersey. Um, been making music for some time. Uh, started out writing songs for a lot of other people, written songs in the R&B hip hop world for a lot of people. And then came over to the, the country side of things as an artist a few years ago. So I was on a plane in Minnesota, I believe. Yeah. And he was sitting in the seat behind me. Too. We're in a tank top and flip flops, by the way. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Naturally. It's hot in the airport. <laughs> yeah. 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 In the plane. I'm inside. Mm -hmm. You know, there is that moment where you got to walk down the thing. Right. And then they have the thing uh -huh. next to like the plane. Topples. It is very cold. But once you get inside, I'm the right spot. But you were sitting there, and I had not known of you. Uh, and I meet you. And then during the whole flight, I just listened to all your shit. And literally during the flight, I'm like, really? Like, hey, you are a talent. You're talent. talent. <laughs> talent. <laughs> so I've obviously been a massive fan ever since. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate the hell out of you getting into the football world. The boys have some questions for you. Go ahead, Colin. Yeah, I mean, you're a Philly fan, South Jersey. Um, what you guys, and I, I, I'm just going to say that because it's all Eagles fans are yep. doing to Nick Sirianni, is not okay. Because you guys yeah. are dragging him through the mud, and he just went to the Super Bowl. Are you all in on Sirianni still, or is that I just I personally am, am all in on Sirianni. I just think he needed a, a little bit more support on the coordinator side. For sure. I think he's someone that's going to rally people together, but you need some of those X's and O's guys to help compliment a guy like that. But you need someone like that, especially since Jalen is so chill. Oh, yeah. yeah. you got to have right. somebody who We're can get everyone. We're talking about that with Harbaugh and Herbert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it feels like we forget about that with Jalen because – the amount of hate Jalen gives. Yeah, people yeah. hate Jalen because he's so well, handsome. Well, look, man, if you so lose cool. a game in Philly, just sure. a single game, people are ready to throw you out. Look, we got rid of Doug Peterson two or three years after yeah. his Super Bowl, and people were looking at us crazy, and I, that's just how it is, man. You got to win often. It, what have you done for me lately in Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful fan base. Yeah. Go ahead, Ty. So speaking of that, uh, do you think, I mean, is Jalen the guy for the future? Everyone's saying, hey, he's too stoic. He's too stoic. You know, you too guys, handsome. Too handsome, yeah. too stoic. He doesn't really, I mean, him Not and A.J. Motion. Brown basically going at each other damn near every week, and social media loves to say, hey, these guys hate each other. Feud. I mean, I don't want to bring up Carson Wentz. I don't know what your feelings on his, <laughs> him are, but uh, I mean, you know, he, he they paid him all that money, so he's obviously going to be there, but do you think Jalen needs to lighten up a little bit maybe just have some fun out there or what i think Jalen's fine i think he was trying to learn a new offense this year and i also think realistically he didn't look 100 percent healthy mm -hmm. some of those fast twitch muscles you usually see him taking off he didn't have that same level of explosiveness i, I wouldn't be surprised if over the next few weeks we find out oh wow he wasn't 100 percent. and to me that was a bigger factor i mm -hmm. learned uh through college game day about the amount of football fans that are in the country music world. Oh, yeah. How is Nashville? Have you enjoyed living down there from Jersey? Yeah, man, Nashville is great. Uh, I feel like everybody, most country music artists look like they play football. And some of them did play football, mm -hmm. but like you look at like a Riley Green or a Sam Hunt. You know, these guys look like they Luke could be. Luke Combs. Luke yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> then maybe, maybe like a Left nose tackle. Nose tackle. Yeah. You know, oh, like nose, a, he's, like, not, he's not putting he's him like outside. A okay. He's like a he's not blocking, okay. Yeah, okay. But yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of bunch of sports fans, a bunch of country music fans, and 
Can for me, I'm trying to bridge the gap between country and, and hip hop, and so I'm trying to do things a little different. Yeah, I don't think you've ever hid from that either. You're not like no, that. not at all. Yeah, so Throw It Back, I believe, is the one mm -hmm. with. Um, yes, sir. Keith. Keith. He's Keith? Yeah, Keith Urban is on Throw It Back. Yeah, that's a Hell yeah. Thank you, bro. Hey, no problem. Tone has a Was, was Keith the dream collab, or do you have other dream collabs that you want to do in the future now? Yeah, I've got a bunch kind of lined up with Keith. Uh, he hit me up, invited me over to his house. Uh, I got in the studio with him, and I just started playing him some songs that I was working on. I had the hook to throw it back and I'm, I'm just playing it for him and he was like that's the one we got to pull that up I was like Keith this song is called you know drop it low you can make it clap I'm like come on now you 55 year old Aussie <laughs> <laughs> but he went for it I don't think he even knows what the song means but, <laughs> but I like it you know hey AJ has a question for you Breland what you got how long, what's your background when it comes to music? Are you like self-taught? Did you do this from a young age? Do you, are you schooled? Like how does all that work with you? Yeah, man, self-taught for the most part. Uh, my parents are singers, not professionally, but kind of semi-pro, uh, really talented musical family. Uh, they kind of got me into it. And then with songwriting, I was just like, look, I want to, I want to be the best. I really appreciate great storytelling, lyricism, you know, bars, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, figured if I could, kind of put all that together in my own unique way, maybe it would work. AJ thought your song was going to be the corniest fucking thing of all time. Oh, I say, mm -hmm. AJ, I got words for you, man. I saw that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but then as soon you as... You watched it in real time, though. Yeah, yeah, but then as soon as he saw TJ watching from the sideline, yeah. yep. yeah. I think that was where he's, oh, wait a wow. second. Wow. Pretty, oh, no, oh, pretty clever fucking guy. Oh, oh, very good. Pretty yeah, very good. No, it was, it was you cool can talk to, to win you over in real time, AJ. That meant a lot. Well, he wasn't the only one. I think what you saw from AJ was probably a lot of football, as we've heard from football people this year. Right. We don't want the shit. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Just want the game. Yeah. That's kinda, but then as you're watching it, you're thinking to yourself, like whenever you tag me in it, and I I know your ability writing and how great it is, like phenomenal storyteller. I'm like, oh, no. Like that's what I was thinking. Right. Oh, no. As I, I was at my house, wife was asleep. Yeah. Okay. I'm, so I didn't even open the DM for 12 hours. Until mm -hmm. you came in. Yeah. So I, I didn't even want you to see that I saw it because I was potentially going to be like, didn't even see it, you know. <laughs> didn't, didn't even see it. So if we yeah. ever, so I open it and I start watching it, and as soon as I'm like, of course, you got about yeah. new, okay. Yeah. And then you started going. And I'm like, oh, of course, Breland's a fucking talent. I should have never doubted. <laughs> but anytime you try to do what you tried to do there, normally it sounds terrible. Oh, and I've seen be, people try to do it in the past. It doesn't work. You are, you, are you going to continue to do? This feels like a good lane. I mean, look, man, look, I'm, I'm always going to continue making my actual regular music but as a sports fan if i get opportunities mm -hmm. to to pop out you know on the pat mcafee show uh you know i'll definitely keep it going bro yeah we're lucky you're here yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not a, <laughs> if you get the opportunity yeah. to yeah there's also a lot of people that can't just do this every single week you know that's just that's come true. up with it just come up with yeah. something because it is isn't clever shit. It's clever. So yeah, clever. like the, some of the bars in there yeah. were next level. Like the Jared Golf Bar. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Jared, man. Yeah. He Best went to Jared. That's where yeah. he find rings. Right. Yeah, Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you smoke whenever you think of this, or just this natural sober you know what? brain? Some, I know you had Smoot, uh, Snoop on here earlier, so maybe I caught a little secondhand. But no, nah, <laughs> I just like to, like to sit and just try to come up. I mean, I'm watching these games in real time, like... I mean, I feel like the Lions offense and defense have been playing great. Same mm -hmm. with the Ravens. I think the Chiefs were maybe one playoff if Stephon Diggs catches that bomb that was perfectly placed in his <laughs> right arm and actually cradles it, brings it in. We're looking at a completely different game. Also, if one boy doesn't doesn't shank the the field goal, yeah. well, watch your mouth. Thank hey, you, Breland. Look, watch look, your mouth. Hey, I know he's look. taking it off. They raised three hundred thousand dollars, by the way, for his ten lives yep. cat foundation. Hey. Is what's being reported by ML Football. Yep. Once hey. again, who knows well, if right. that's real? Right. And also, I know we get, kickers get a bad rap. You know. It's yeah, like, you just decided to. <laughs> Kickers get a bad rap. Like it's, it's windy. You never know what's going sure. on. They probably should have got it in the end zone, and it wouldn't have been on his shoulders to do it in the first place. Amen. But, Put that in the next song. You know, <laughs> had they scored that touchdown, my score would have been right, and my pick would have been right. Yeah. Would have been 31-27. What was I it? Su Super Wild Card Weekend. Lions win, but it's a close call. Uh -oh. yep. yeah. yeah. hey, it was. Spot you're on. You're getting some shit, like, I'm really. Yeah. Yeah, the C.J. Stroud stat line. Look, man, I'm, I'm out here sniping it, man. Flo Stradamus <laughs> going you, nice. you gambling Close on these games or not? Every now and then I'll put a little something down, but I also know that when you try to make a parlay, mm. me being eight for ten, I would have made zero dollars. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you know, you got you to gotta try to cut your losses. If you can get out while you can, you got to get out. Kayshawn Butte. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't know that. 8,900 bets this guy made. I saw this uh, uh, kid who just. Yeah. The LSU? 
LSU kid. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's 80, tough. Eighty nine, and he was betting on his own team, which I know makes people even more upset. Yeah, but mm-hmm. what has been reported, which no is a win. good piece of information, he wasn't betting against them. No, no, no that's fair. Like there's sure. a couple, which can't do that, <laughs> right? Obviously, right. Of course, but can't do it. Like there's a Col- there was a Colts guys that got kicked off the team for gambling and allegedly were gambling on Colts stuff, and I'm like, it should come. You guys should want the world to know whether or not that was betting for the Colts oh, yeah. or against the Colts. Because if it's against the Colts, it's like never allowed back yeah. in sports. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Get him that's out. That's true. That's, uh, that's a bad you got to at least be able to bet on yourself. Bingo. Oh, to yeah. win. So yeah. boxers do have done that for a long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Boxers have gone to the window or somebody has and bet on them so they can up the purse and everything like that. Can't happen in football. We got a good thing going. Yeah. One of them is the fact that we got a genius putting <laughs> out songs every single weekend. So next year, 17 games, one bye week. Yep. That's 18 songs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Preseason's three games. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. That's 21. Sure. Yeah, right. You can do an off-season Sup- one about like Amy Strunk in Nashville. Going <laughs> into the season, yep. it's 22 it's songs. Season two, though. You know, we got free agent moves. <laughs> Free agent moves. Boom. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Stand UFL up. too. Yeah, the draft yep. is a good yeah. point. Yep. Draft is a big one. Yep. <laughs> you're gonna be busy. Baseball. You need the draft. You're gonna be busy. Oh so, yeah. What if you did top ten of the draft order? How you see it going? That's mm. that'd be sick. That's probably. It's your are, are the Bears taking a quarterback? But you, you tell, tell us. us. Yeah, you tell us. I can only give it to you in song form. That's all I know. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Breland, we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, without further ado, now AJ, we got to make our picks. You can head out through anywhere. I got you. You walk right in front of the camera. You're good. We're gonna. This is only gonna be like probably five minutes too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you just want to hang out. Oh yeah. Okay. It's up to you. I don't know what your plans are. Bro, I'm, I'm kicking it. What's we'll, we'll up? How about you coming up to Indiana? Yeah, yeah. awesome. Hey, awesome. The amount of people that would do this one. Mm-hmm. Normally people we're drive looking at him. from here to Nashville. They don't normally make the drive from Nashville to Indy. Not yeah. a bad trip. No, it was, it was super simple. Yeah, everyone has been pumped ex- except for one guy. Um, because you parked uh, two inches from his car. That's Evan Fox. Me, that was, hey, look. There's 45 spots out there. Yeah, right? he is. <laughs> he is this far away from Fox's passenger door. I watched him bash yeah. into the passenger door <laughs> on Fox's no. 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 this, this close. I mean, hey, the, no the, way. Width, the width of this mic. That, that is how far. <laughs> and remember, away. this is used to be a church. Now it's a Thunderdome. Yeah. There are yeah. 2,000 parking spots. So yep. many. As we're going live, I want to let you know. As we're going live for this hour, Connor goes, have you Breland Park this far this from close. the Bronco? This, and, and Foxy hates when people park near it's his car. It's a close call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he picked the Lions, though, so we're all good. We're all go. good. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, that's hilarious. All right, uh, AJ, it's time for you and me. Now, the record, you have taken the lead. Whoa. Wow. wow. You have taken really? the In lead. The playoffs. I am now 6-7-6. Six, and six. You are 7-6-6 seven, six, and six on the year, picking against the spread. We tied this past weekend, so obviously nothing takes place. Massive championship weekend here for the picks. AJ, let's start in Baltimore. Four-point spread. Patrick Mahomes is getting that in M&T Bank Stadium. Travis Kelsey had two touchdowns last week. It's the playoffs. He's going to play his best football. Oh, yeah. Patrick Showtimes Mahomes gets an opportunity to do what he did last weekend, which is go into a city and steal their joy. They got the tailgoat happening beforehand with DJ Shaq, DJ Diesel, what? Ray Lewis, Ed Reed are going to be in attendance. T-Pain's performing at halftime. I think Ooh. Sizz is going to be there. Baltimore is going to be alive, and that's what Patrick Mahomes wants. And on the other side, Multiple MVPs. Mm -hmm. The next great football generation. Hell yeah. The next style of football. Has been since he got into the NFL. Hasn't had the opportunity to show the world his greatness on the biggest stage just yet. Will the dominant Baltimore Ravens defend that house with a four-point spread and get out of there with a dub with Keith Van Noy and the boys on the defense? Well, it's great to see Keith Van Noy, obviously, on the graphic here, like always. I've gone back and forth on this one. I don't know how you feel, Pat. I've gone back and forth. Even since you started laying this game out, I think I've changed my opinion. I was leaning somewhat heavily on Kansas City, and then I hear hearing you speak got me thinking about Lamar, got me thinking about what the atmosphere will be like in the bank on Sunday. Give me the Ravens minus four. Oh. I love the Swifties. I love Patrick Mahomes. I've made more excuses for this Chiefs team all year than any other human on earth whenever they were playing bad football. Yep. I appreciate Andy Reid. I love everything about that team. 
except for them playing against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Give me the Baltimore Ravens at MNT Bank Stadium, and go. I think it is going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. Wow. That is going to be a show over there in Baltimore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The videos that are going to be coming from the internet. I know they say Bill's Mafia and everything like that. Wait until you see what comes out of this tailgate. Like what's happening oh, leading up yeah. to yeah. this game. Three o'clock too. It's like perfect time. Yep, perfect. You yep. get there like mm -hmm. nine. A.m. Not that people won't be there six five, whatever the case is. But you you don't have to. You no. get there eight a.m. Yeah. nine a.m. Ten mm -hmm. even. Yeah, twelve. You well, no, twelve. I assume the place is already going to be packed mm -hmm. up. But there's a good six hour lead up there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, where you can get pretty lubed oh, up yeah. mm -hmm. to go in there and do your thing. And Ronnie ain't gonna let. No. no. Best Baltimore Ravens team loose. No, no chance. I like the Ravens this weekend, even though the Chiefs is the Chiefs. And they always will be the Chiefs. And then let's go to Santa Clara, 6.30 on Fox. The San Francisco 49ers, the number one seed. With check down Brock Purdy is what a lot of people want to call him. Favored by seven and a half. Taking on this beautiful fairy tale story of the Detroit Football Lions. Jared Goff has his name getting chanted around the entire city of Detroit. Aiden Hutchinson is the man that brought Michigan back to prominence and the Detroit Lions into a spotlight that they haven't been as a Michigan boy. He has done well. Seven and a half in Santa Clara. How do you see it going, AJ? Seven and a half feels like a lot of points, I feel like. Now, I don't know if that's disrespectful to the Detroit Lions. I'm sure they take it as disrespect if they hear that they're seven and a half point dogs. This is another one I've gone back and forth with because I love how talented San Francisco is. I love watching their defense fly around, but I got to take Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions here at plus seven and a Let's half. Let's go. Off. Hell yeah. I have. I will. Something's going on out there, man. Detroit's got it. <laughs> got something happening. Now, even if the Lions don't win, I feel like they can keep it closer than seven and a half. So put the records man, back up between me and AJ. They can win. Yeah, so we can't fucking be the same. No. And yeah. boy, I really want it. They're changing Jared Goff. Exactly. Yeah. MCDC yeah. is all coming to fruition. CJ, GJ. Did you hear what he said? Yep. Mm -hmm. Imagine that locker room. Imagine the post game locker room for, if the Lions win this game. How, like, oh, that can't pick the same. would be amazing. Give me the Niners. Brock Purdy. Here what everybody's been saying about him. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. could win by 17. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, everything can happen. The Seven money. and a half in the NFC Championship. Mm -hmm. And know. the money being on the Lions and the Lions still moving. You know, the opposite way. That makes me feel terrible about the Lions. All right. Well, I mean, sports books have been wrong yeah. in the past, especially this season, with the amount of games that have potentially had 80% bets and then gone the other way. But I like the San Francisco 49ers because it's my only shot in this thing against A.J. Hawk. But I think we all understand that we're in for great games on Sunday. Yeah. Royal Rumbles tomorrow night, right in the championship weekend on Sunday, and then overreaction Monday. Shout out to Breland making a trip. Hey, man, Breland. Thank you, guys. Good job. Shout out to one half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys, Tone Diggs. Great work this week. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to the talk to the table, con man, Ty. Great work, boys. Shout out to work. In the back, you guys crushed it this week. Good work, back. Thank you, boys. Ready to go, back there. AJ, phenomenal work. And Breland has a new song coming out I'm just hearing, February 16th. I do. What's the, it called? Y'all are hearing it here first. It's called Heartbreaking Alcohol. It's a lot of fun. Hell yeah. Heartbreaking Good Alcohol? Title. Heartbreaking Alcohol. Okay, is this, uh, what what, are, what should we expect going into this particular song? It's, uh, it's a, it samples a song that you may know from the hip-hop world with a fresh country take. Ooh. I like that. Hell yeah. Heartbreak? Heartbreaking Alcohol. February 16th. That's the one. Congratulations. Hopefully Let's you go. hit both of these this week. Appreciate you guys. We'll see. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be a part of your lives every single day. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this. We'll be back on Overreaction Monday. And until you no longer have us, be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We're in this thing together. Let's never, ever forget that. Goodbye. <laughs>